Thank you for tuning in to TalkWad.com, the world's fastest growing internet radio network. Please check out all the other great shows on www.talkwad.com. Listening to ComedySlamRadio.com. From our studios to the world, we bring you the finest in quality entertainment. So pop some popcorn, grab a smooch buddy, and settle in for another fine show from ComedySlamRadio.com. Gentlemen, it's time for the double special show coming to you live from beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida, featuring Christopher Gorgeous, Tiffany Barbie, and me, JB Lee. So sit back and enjoy the show, baby. And we're back live on the double special show with me, Christopher Gorgeous, to my left, <laughs> J.B. Lee, and over there is Tiffany Barbie. Yes, welcome back to another episode uh, right here <laughs> on ComedySlamRadio.com. Uh, back for another week, chock full of stuff. Uh, we got Will doing the producing in the booth there. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about. Um, uh, comics making it famous while we do not. Uh, Brad yeah. McLean doing the extra work, leg work for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to talk about Tiffany's uh, sadness d- uh, deprivation. She's unable to feel, have any emotions. So we'll talk what? about a little about that tonight. You know exactly what I am talking yeah. about, and we're going to get into that. Uh, we missed you while we were gone. Interesting week here in Florida. Interesting week all over the planet. Uh, as always, the phone number is in the studio, uh, 727-493-2055. Uh, and uh, it should be a good show, man. We got a lot of stuff lined up, right, JB? We're gonna, it's yes. going to be a good show? Lots Chocolate. of technical problems. <laughs> Are you trying to pull up a stories and everything? I'm trying to pull up a story you requested. Okay, that's fine. That's it, fine. It will not. Uh, that's uh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> we will tonight tease the, uh, let's see, uh, one, two, three, I think the fourth stunt that we're, we've done four, three stunts, right? Well, we three did stunts. board breaking. No, we did, we did, no, we did, we did three stunts so far, so we have one more stunt coming. The four, it'll be the fourth stunt. Yeah, the board breaking doesn't count. That wasn't anything cool. Yeah, well, I mean, it was cool, I mean, it was but it was... cool, was, but... Yeah, I mean, but it wasn't... Little children can do that. Well, yeah, some little children. Not I, My little child can. He's only four and a half, and I don't really want him trying to I break boards. I could throw him in a board, like could, a board hard enough, probably. Yeah, why do you always want to... You always want to get violent with my kid. I don't uh, understand uh, where that comes uh, from. He's not that bad of a kid. And for those of you out there that were listening to the show last week, uh, we uh, I had my son in the studio four and a half. I had a, we had like a, a babysitter issues, and he had to be. And he was very good for most part of the show. But my wife, uh, our, our co-producer uh, Crystal Hayes, uh, gorgeous, was uh, came in the studio. He started freaking out, and it totally distracted us. Brad McLean was on the phone from Australia. Had some nice little bits he'd worked up. I was so distracted, I don't think I even heard like four uh, any of them. There was like four or five, right, Tiffany? And I I, I missed them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he really kind of played up during that part. And Crystal got so offended when I said on Twitter that uh, your kid distracted me, and now you're saying it. Well, He's that's, saying it. I, I, well, you no, you seriously. Look, I got thrown off as well uh, but, but from a fatherly point. You're like, I don't want my kid to destroy a $10,000 camera that's oh, filming. Yeah. Right. Not you, uh, you can't afford that. Not that well, little monster. No, what did he break now? I mean, <laughs> it's horrible. It doesn't, look, it doesn't break anything. What did he destroy last week? He didn't you destroy me? anything last week. He, oh, okay. He's a good, listen, he's a good little boy. It's like he something leave, about an antique wardrobe. I leave my son the hell out of it. And I uh, hope maybe tonight we can uh, d- uh, sort of take a detour from our normal stuff. And we were talking about uh, Tiffany's mom. I want to give your mom a call on the phone. I want to see if we can just, uh-huh. even if we can leave a message, maybe we can just call her. Because you can Tiffany, try. what did you tell us before the show about your mom? What she did- said the last episode was her favorite episode. She so, thought yeah, it was baby. so great. And she, so she's been actively listening to the show. Yeah, I know. Your mother, the anti-social, not anti-social, she, is it anti-social or is it? What no, she got? she's just, I don't she know. She just doesn't like being well, she, out in public. She's very social when she's with people she's comfortable with. Right. So she's right. got to be comfortable. But, so she knows us pretty much. I mean, she's already spent like yeah. hours and hours in our company, basically. <laughs> right, yeah. So she said she went to the store and she was laughing you with it. You think she'd be running for the hills by now. <laughs> oh, crap. I know. I don't know why out? she's listening to Well, it. what do you mean you don't know why? That's a horrible thing to say about this no, show. No, but I just, it scares me. She, I don't think she needs to know me this way. Well, and that's part of the reason I want to talk to her. I want to smooth out this whole thing. I want her to say to you live on the air that it is okay for you to open up Mm-hmm. And be yourself and share your innermost secrets. I I, mm-hmm. I want, you know what I'm saying? I want you to get your mother's blessing to do the show and be yourself. We She's want you worried to... about our next stunt. Well, well I'm going to get into it later. I'm going to tease <laughs> it. And she should be worried because, first of all, 
Uh, I didn't come up with the stunt. Did First you? of all, <laughs> oh. check in, check in. Yeah, okay. All right. James Franco admitted to Colbert that his James Franco act is classic James Franco. <laughs> All right, check I, in. I, I find that very funny. Okay. Yeah, no, because I thought you were going to say James Dean. It is kind of James Deany, kind of smoky. He's a James Deany, smoky kind of guy, but he's got a movie coming out that's like set here in the place where we live. Which in, is? Uh, Spring Breakers. The, no, I mean, where, where do we live? Oh, uh, Tampa Bay area. <laughs> I forgot. He's like, ah. What uh, do you think? You like James I Franco? I like to admit Tiffany? it. Um, James Franco actually played James Dean in James Dean's life story. Uh, was, uh-huh. that on, was that an A yeah, that, sort of a thing? No, um, that's just how I know who James Franco is. It's because he actually played James. You never saw James Franco do anything prior to I that? I think he was in General Hospital, which I never saw him do. Okay. You mean like uh, as a recurring uh, character? Oh, he was in Spider-Man or something. Wasn't well, he? He, yes, he was in Spider-Man. He was also yes. in, uh, wasn't he in Milk? I think he was he in was Milk. He was in Milk. Yep. He was in uh, the sequel, Coffee. Yeah. What else was he in? Oh, he was in. Wasn't he in the movie with uh, the guy that got his arm trapped? Uh, yes. Yes. Hiking what was it 127 yes. hours. Arm good. Arm know. dude. The movie. I that was a wonderful <laughs> film. I haven't seen this. You know the story. The guy that fell down the crevasse uh, mm. while hiking in the desert got his arm pinned in a rock, and then the arm comes after him. It right. tracks him down through the canyons. Horrible true story. It was awful. Yeah. But you James, never knew arms could do that. And James played it convincingly. Well, apparently his arm the did. guy was part lizard. Yeah. No, I've never heard of that. Uh, uh, you, I wouldn't expect it's you. A would. delicious movie. <laughs> All right, I don't know. What, why would he say that? Well, he said he plays a great version of himself doing himself. Yeah, he's just being all James Franco. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Tick, tick, snap, 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 snap. No, listen, I think he's a very talented guy. I think he's a good actor, and he's damn good looking. I, I don't know. We talked about the list last week. I, he's one of those guys that has really? the dreamy eyes. Yeah. No, he's just... Yeah, I, if uh, I was going to go gay, it would be somebody like James Franco. He's cool. He's a rat-faced fellow. What do you mean he's rat-faced? He's all rat faced Define rat-faced. I mean, he has whiskers or a pointy nose, or what is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, pointy nose? I can yeah. see that. You see I him as a see, rat? Like, let's say he was in a Cinderella movie, mm-hmm. and he got changed from a mouse to a human. I could see him looking like that. He was the or mouse. He was the rat in the, it was the, the blue sweater. Yeah, uh, borrowers, come on. <laughs> He was like, Be Jack. serious now. I, I'm sorry. It's the first thing that popped into he my was Jack Ratatouille. Jack. He was what? Jack Jack. And into the mic, please. Jack Jack. Who's Jack Rat? From what? Cinderella. Wasn't the, the thing was Gus and Jack? Okay, you're talking to two dudes over here. I don't remember any of those characters. Those are three I, mice? There were mice. And there were the two. I know they had annoying voices and they danced somewhat. That's all I remember. Who was he in The Secret of Nim, though? Yeah, that's the question. Is he in that movie? I don't know. If he was a rat, yes, he would be in that movie. I don't remember that movie. I don't like your words. Uh, I don't like your words. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <clears throat> Are we continuing with this? Yeah. No. Check in. Check in. <laughs> Mother Teresa was no Mother Teresa. I knew it. I knew she was doing something crooked. They're always doing something crooked. They're all starting to say now, like, oh, well, you know, maybe maybe she wasn't so great considering, you know, she just let poor people lie and rugs on the floor and die. Well, but what is she that supposed to do? That was her whole, well. Yeah, but she can't. It's not like, she, what is she going to take everybody back to the, you know, where did she stay at? The Vatican? Was she part of the, did she, she stay in the Vatican? No, she, well, she ran like an entire holy order of nuns and raked in donations and such forth for hospitals. Yeah, but you can't save everybody. I mean, come on. Well, but, you When know. you go to India, dude, how many people are starving in India? You can't just swoop everybody up off the street. What well, you should try. Uh, well, she did. She, I think she tried. Well, okay. You're being awful critical of somebody who I think I somebody are, I haven't read the whole article yet. Please, so I don't really fill know. me in. What What are the details? Because I don't. I mean, is there anything saucier? Like, did she smack children? What um, What do you know about Mother Teresa? What? Oh, impression? good. I was so, trying to figure out who you were talking about. No, I was looking at Jordan. Right, that's okay. I was like, are you talking about James Franco still? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, this is really just a crap news story. But uh. All right. Wait. <laughs> But Mother Teresa's dead, so how could she still be doing things? Well, they're trying to canonize her now. Can- I think they already did. They made her a saint or something. Well, she's uh, she's halfway there. Canonize her? Yeah. Yeah, turn her into a saint. Oh, is that what that means? Yeah. You're going to religious school? You're going to church but school? But I'm not going to, like, Catholic school. It's true. Well, true that. That's yeah, a whole Yeah, but you different study thing. other religions, right? She doesn't even consider I- Catholics to be Christians. Is that true? No, I yeah, they are. Into the <laughs> mic. In- talk right into the mic. You're looking all around like it's a photo shoot. Just right into the mic. <laughs> she refuses to get close to that mic, dude. I don't like it. But we're on mouth. a radio show. If this was a video thing, I'd be I like, I gave you a Purell wipe. Everything on it died. Right? I know, but then I was worried, what if water got into it and I became electrocuted? Listen, if anybody should worry about it being electrocuted in here, it's me. All right, yeah. so don't, yeah, this, you're safe. We're not going to, not yet. All right, anyway, so yeah, that's what you got on Mother Teresa. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing. Right? Yeah, she's right. dead. Okay. 
All right, do we want to hear Mike Rivera on The View? Well, let me set it up first before oh, okay. you do that. All right, so that's it. Two stories in the check-in, and you're done. Well, I thought this was the third second. Uh, no, it's not. Story. No, uh, look, the more? check-in thing is yours. You give me what you got, we go with it. Right. That's what I'm saying. You, we can wait on that. Well, do you, you want more? Don't. I want to go as long as you want to go, baby. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> President Obama inviting the GOP to dinner. To try to end the sequester. What do you think of the sequester? I don't. Chris I don't understand the sequester. What does it even mean? It means they like cut all the budgets of all the federal agencies across the board. That's what a sequester means. Yes. What is the official definition of sequester? Doesn't it to bring something into oh, a closed here space? Oh, all this Scientology. I, no, it's not Scientology. I just want to know what the word means and if all it right, even fits right, that right. definition that you're giving. I am going to pull up the definition of sequester. It's Wait, not going to be necessarily let's fine. See if, let's see if Tiffany knows. What is the definition of sequester? Right, say it in a sentence. Uh, the the judge sequestered the jury for a week. Okay. Well, so, now you're using it in the wrong. We're talking of a noun, and you're using well, it in the verb I'm, form. Well, that's what I'm saying. What does it's it got even two mean? different meanings. Okay, tell me what they are. Well, you asked Tiffany. Well, no. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. It means to ask people to come in and <coughs> and not do other things. Yes, that's that's <laughs> that's true. I know. I was gonna that's say what a concierge does. They sequester <laughs> people as they come into the hotel. I'm thinking she's probably closer than I am. She's probably got it closer. What is it? You got two meanings, right? All right. The verb form is to isolate or hide away. Is okay. it when you hide away a journey and allow oh. or jury, a not jury. journey? Right. You should hide away journey. Okay, as that's well. the not one. Not Steve Eric, the band. But right. No, that's that's the, that's. Oh, the... it's to hide. I just knew that from nothing, not from yes. Twitter. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> she simplified it right down to one I know, word. She it. was so busy cheating on Twitter, she didn't even hear us. That was John. John yeah. told me that. <laughs> okay. So All right. But a noun is okay. a general cut in jo- government spending. Oh, okay. See, so I didn't know that because I never <laughs> looked up the word uh, rather than the one, uh, no, I mean, aside from the one that I already know. So they're cutting everything across the board. Well, right. that's good. That's good, right? No. What do you mean, no? Because some government programs are completely overfunded, yes. i.e. military and other so such the, things. So everything... Others are massively underfunded as it uh, is, and okay. they're, gonna, they're all going to get cut across the board okay. regardless. So it's one number across the board. Exactly. It's okay. not targeted. There's no savings. I, you know, so... I redact my statement. I Thank think that's you. bad. That's bad. No, they should pick and choose the ones that are bloated. But then you get into the argument of who decides which ones are good and bad and needed and not, not needed, in the foreground, right? blah, blah, blah. So, right. yeah, but no. So. <laughs> The whole time I was going, I'm like, what is this even? Do you, did you hear about the sequester thing? Unfortunately, I missed the first part of Jordan talking, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. We're talking about the, the whole thing about the sequester coming up. Is that what okay. it's called? The sequester? I mean, of the government Well, it's funding. already happened. So... Yeah, it's already, it, we're waiting for the effects to start being felt. What does this mean? It means that. What does it mean? What do they actually- Like, I don't get it. So well, the government is sequestering people for what? <laughs> 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 We've what moved past the noun, or the verb, rather. They're sequestering the people onto road construction juries. Who yeah, is? Right? The government. Yeah. Why? Be- well, they need juries to judge the road construction as it goes on. Ooh. You see all these... No, have you ever seen road construction going on? Now that you've got a car, I'm sure you see it occasionally in the cones and out there. <laughs> yes. Okay. They have The government picks juries of people to go out there and <laughs> judge these road works as they're ongoing. And... Like you literally, you'll, it's like when you get jury duty in a court, but you'll get a letter saying uh, you've been sequestered for road jury. That would be terrible. I hated jury duty. Well, get ready for it. It happens automatically uh, six to 12 months after you do regular jury duty. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You should be getting a letter soon. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, so, no, but I, I remember at one point Obama was supposed to talk to, to Boehner, right? They were supposed to have some big discussion. Right. And so right. now today, they're, apparently he's invited them to dinner again when they're, you know. So have they solved class. any of this? Are they going to do it? Is it not going to be done? Where are they at with this? Uh, nobody knows. Nobody People, knows. Everyone's just gotten so sick of these jerks. I mean, just, yeah. oh. I'm with you, dude, because I and half yeah. the time, I don't know. I still don't know what the hell's going to happen with Obamacare. I have no idea what the particulars are. Other than oh, I know. people are going to be forced to buy some sort of health care. I don't have an Obama phone yet. I, <laughs> I don't want an Obama phone. My phone's bad enough. Can you imagine what the Obama phone is? Oh, I know. It's probably like, like a an jitterbug. old Nokia or something. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. a piece of crap thing. that this, yeah. it's, You know what it is? It's the phones that they get from that idiot that goes, Hey, man, you want to sell your phone? Pa-bam! That dude. And he collects all the phones, and they go into the Obama phone thing. If you get more than five words in a text, you have to hit scroll. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's interesting you bring this story up because now we can flip to the other thing, which was uh, one of our good friends, uh, and go to the beginning of that. Uh, is that the is that him getting 
I didn't. I, I skipped past the intro. Oh, but Troy you pulled it up on the view on the on the on YouTube. Why didn't you pull it up on the because view? Because it wasn't working on the view. Damn it! Are I you did, sure? I did what I did. Anyway, we, a good friend of the show, a uh, local comic, Mike Rivera. Uh, we've known him for years. He's been a big fan of the Charming Hooligans, the Improv Troupe. With uh, I don't think have you ever met him, Tiffany? Mike Rivera. I think I have. Yeah, but well, I didn't become friends or bond. Well, I, that doesn't surprise me because if no. he's not interesting, why, why would you? Just don't even bother. Well, now he's interesting. Oh. No, I'm joking. No, that's the way it's going to go, though. No. Are you sure you can't pull it up on The View? Yes. Because it's, it's got the intro, and he comes out, and it's got music, and it's much better. Yes. All right, dude. God. It doesn't even look like the same thing, dude. I don't care. All right, I do. If it's the wrong thing, I'm going to stab you with this pen. I'm telling I will, you right now. I because I sent you. you the link, and if you play the wrong one, I'm going to, I swear to God, I'm going to put this it right through your hand. It wasn't playing because The View does not support Linux. Based operating systems. I'm I don't. So believe, sorry. That's ridiculous. I tried. Come on, dude. Look, here's the page right here. What's we got? Black box. Black box. What is the? Pro- what? Is, why can't you work anything in here? It's probably because it's Silverlight or some crap. <sighs> same thing. It's the All same right. thing. It better be. All right. So anyway, so Mike Rivera is I a local so. teacher, Osceola Middle School, and he's it's also a stand-up not. comic. He's, and, a head, he's and, a, Yeah. And when he came on the show, mm-hmm. we were not allowed to talk about him being a teacher. I was. Re- right. I was warned repeatedly, over and over. Tell him. Tell me the warning. Give me the warning again. Well, didn't he call himself Mike Maverick when he came on the show? I remember he changed his name to Mike Maverick. Yes, he did. He, he, we he, like, and he wore Maver- a cowboy hat. <laughs> He was a porn cop. I don't know what yeah. he was. Uh, but, yeah, so anyway, for the longest time, could not uh, admit that he did stand up and uh, and be a teacher at the same time publicly for fear that he might lose his job. And then suddenly it worked out for him. It worked out unbelievably. Uh, again, we've known Mike for about 10 years. Mike enters a contest on The View. It's the year of The View or on The View, a show which I never watch. What is that? It's a woman's show, right, basically? Yeah, it's a ladies. Do you watch The View, Tiffany? Are you into that? No. You're home in the, but you're home in the daytime, right? I am. You don't watch the as Whoopi and uh, no, I don't his, like to watch TV that but, much. Barbara Walters. Okay, well, that'll cut you right out of this. All right, so anyway, he enters a contest for America's Funniest Teacher. Uh, go ahead and play a set. Let's hear it. You're gonna right, start from, yeah, start it from the beginning. This is Mike Rivera on the View. Bring that baby up. You guys are wild. It is so great to be here. I mean, it is really great to be here because think of it. After all these years, I finally get to skip school and get away with it. Okay, my friends. <laughs> So he was nervous, obviously, coming out the gate. Oh, come he, on, dude. He skips. He's been doing. He's been doing. Hey, right, no, hey hold on. Will, Will can you bring this computer up thing just a tad? Is he is he in there? Is Will in there? He left. Just oh. bring it up. Bring this up just a tad. Just a tad so we can hear it. Okay. All right. Go ahead. that? Perfect. Hey, students. Mr. Vera's not really sick today. Yeah. <laughs> My last name is my last name is Rivera. I'm Hispanic. I'm 100% Puerto Rican. A lot of students don't believe that. I mean, nobody actually believes that. Last week, who would lie about that? Okay. <laughs> last week after a PTA meeting, this guy comes up to me and says, "Hey, man, you shouldn't say that because you do not look like a Puerto Rican." And I'm like, "Dad, we've been through this before." Okay. Okay, stop it. So obviously he's he's now he's hitting his stride because that was smooth. Yeah, yeah. That was television friendly. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, continue. Yeah. I'm a good teacher. I love giving book reports. But the thing nowadays, all the kids are always doing the same topics. It's always what? The Hunger Games, Twilight, Harry Potter, Fifty Shades of Grey. Whoa. I actually had a kid do Fifty Shades of Grey, and of course, like you, I'm reading going, this is wrong. This is wrong. I mean, come on. Come on. Submissive is spelled with three S's, not two. Come on. Well, of course I gave... No, I don't, I don't know if I want them teaching children. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Are they really doing book reports about, about Fifty Shades? We should leprechaun him on that one. All right. Well, he's going to call yeah. next week. Go finish this. Right. Yeah, let's hear the rest. Yeah, re- remind us to leprechaun him on that joke. <laughs> okay. We, we need the truth. All right. Mother of C. <laughs> But she did deserve the paddle. Okay. (laughs) Teaching's cool, but the thing about teaching is the kids, you gotta know this, the kids always wanna get you. You could be the coolest teacher on the planet, but they always wanna get you. And it's always when the principal is reviewing you. Last week, I'm getting my observation done, right? And all of a sudden, this kid stands up in the middle of class. He goes, hey, Jimmy, hey, Jimmy. He goes, oh, your mama turns tricks for $10. Ah! I'm freaking out. The principal's freaking out, but you all know this. Every teacher's supposed to be able to do what? Turn a negative into a positive. Yeah, it's called making a teachable moment. Yeah, teachable moment. It's like Stewie from Family Guy. Oh, make it a teachable moment, yeah. So I stopped the class, I go, okay, Jimmy, let's go over this new teachable moment. 
Let's say your mama turns tricks for $10 <laughs> and daddy's in jail and needs $300 to post bail. So the question is, how many tricks does mom have to turn before daddy posts bail? All right, pause it. All right, so that's his set. And then, of course, there's a panel of judges that have to talk to him, right? We got Maria Cantone, and I, I know Maria Cantone from the early days of stand-up, but, uh, girls know, but girls know him from what show was Maria Cantone on. It's my wife, Amelia. I didn't know he was on the show. He was on, come on, big girly show, HBO, Sarah Jessica, Jer, Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, Sex in the City? That's right, he was on oh, Sex he was on that? He I was on. Dude, do What you, part did he play? He used to be on some really disturbing kid show in New York on, like, <laughs> local TV. Really? Yeah, and he'd play, like, a, <laughs> like, like a... 13 year old boy in oh the inner city but you know obviously like a 35 year old man a gay a well, he was he was man. he wasn't outly gay i mean like oh, okay. probably gay at that point but it was just <laughs> oh man it was the weirdest damn thing you'd see him like doing like these heartfelt monologues in the character of a 13 year old boy on that this crappy creepy. alley set <laughs> wearing some like muscle shirt and he's oh, like my God. yeah what the what the hell? where do you find this stuff that I, was on actual television no in i New believe York. it but i've never even heard of that i mean yeah, you saw i lived there okay. it was on when you were a kid. Uh, it was so awful. Dude. The other judge is Joy Behar, who I've known. She's been a stand-up for years. And then some other woman who I've never heard of. So go ahead and play the comments, because he, he did well. You're a naughty teacher. You're a naughty teacher. Let's hear from our judges. I like you, and I want to see you even do more than the tea. I know this is a teacher show, but I like you. I like you. I like you, too. The edginess of it too. It's very funny. Good. Yes. Good I you. like you more. I think you're. <laughs> first of all, the hooker joke at the end is hilarious. But I, but I also think you're so you really really likable. Yes. Like I met you backstage Aww. for a second, and it's the same vibe I got on stage. It's really nice. And when very, you're likable, you, you can get away with murder. Yeah, you're confident. <laughs> and you also riffed a little bit. Did you do a few yes. things that weren't planned? Yes. I love that. Thank you so oh, much. All right, so cut up. Now, on the same page, is there an announcement where he won? Because I want to play that. Monday to find out the winner of Hilarious uh, Teacher Stand Up Competition. Thanks to Terry. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's on there. But anyway, all right, so here's the final thing. He went up against five other teachers. He won. So, Mike Rivera, this is for you. Ding, 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 Yay. double special. We're so proud of you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And the prize, if you're interested, uh, for Mike Rivera is to come back. He's going to fly back to New York uh, tonight or tomorrow, actually. Uh, and tape a set with Joy Behar for Joy Behar's uh, uh, Comedy Corner, which is on The View, and it'll be on Friday. So if you want to check that out, it's on ABC, The View. I think it's at like 11 o'clock, or no, it's 10 o'clock, actually. The funny thing is, is that the reason we uh, uh, segued from the other story was that when it was originally supposed to air on The View, like five minutes before it was supposed to, his set was supposed to air, the, the View went, Donald Trump was on being an idiot, uh, talking to Whoopi, that was hysterical in itself, uh, got up to like, Four minutes before he was supposed to do his little thing, and the president came out to talk about the sequester thing, to tell us what we already basically knew happened at midnight. It was lame. Mm -hmm. So he didn't actually get on live television, but it aired later, and, uh, and he won. And so we're very proud of you, Mike. Hopefully next week he'll be on the show or call in. I want him to call yeah, him tonight from cool. New York. Well, I want him to call from, t from New York, but you know how it is. You said it earlier, Tiffany. Now, you know, listen, Mike is not all of us. He's great friends with Steve Eric. They've known each other for years. The, Steve Eric called him his dear friend. I don't know if I would get a dear friend if I won something. I don't uh, uh, Lou Angel Wolf, obviously, been on our shows, many of our radio shows, very mm. funny guy. They're close friends. But I think everybody's been calling him. And yeah, everybody's going to be bugging him. I know, and I don't want to feel like now, you know, and I, listen, I, I talk to Mike on a regular basis, I, you know. Yeah, so you should be okay. Like, I think if. Uh, but even though I think I'm okay, I still feel weird about it. Like, I feel like I'm, you know, like. What just, if, just tell him that you feel weird. The same thing would have happened to you, Tiffany, had you hooked up with Pauly Shore when you did the contest when you're supposed to be his intern. Had you mm -hmm. won the contest. Everybody would have come out of the woodwork. Hey, Tiffany, good for you. Hey, listen, you know. Mm -hmm. blah, blah. Not that I would ask him anything of Mike except to come on the show and talk about it, but, you know, whatever. All right, we got a phone call. We're going to go ahead and take it. We got Chris Kaz from calling from Dallas. What's up, Kaz, man? Good evening, guys. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good. How are you, sir? Doing well, doing well. How's sunny Florida? Uh, well, it's it's sunny. We've had a few land issues. We'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, other than that, I mean, hey, listen, it's cold here. I like it. It's nice. Is it cold? Yeah, yeah it's, it's freezing here. Is it? What do you got going on in Dallas? I actually just had a friend in from Florida, from Miami, ah. and uh, she was complaining about how cold it was the whole time. Now, it, when you, it's, it's now, been like now when you say you had, now when you say you had a friend in from Miami, is it sort of a love sort of a connection, a Latina mm -hmm. love connection? 
No, no, no. I'm um, I'm actually in love with a girl in Dallas. Oh, it's okay. A, it's a rough situation, though. So the love thing is a rough situation. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough situation. Oh man, are yeah. you stalking again? <laughs> like, I, I am. I am. She doesn't know I like her, but. Well, no, but let's. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. We can't talk about it. We can't talk about your little love. No, situation. we can talk about. It. We can talk about. Do you want to talk about I'm Mario Cantone? <laughs> Do you want to talk about Mario? I, I pulled up a video of Mario Cantone being a serious young child. Do you want right, to hear that? No, save it. I want to. Oh. I want to talk to. I want to talk to Kaz about what's he, what he's got going on. I mean, oh, obviously, call yeah, for a reason. It sounds interesting. He always has like a different girl. He likes. No offense. Are you? Uh, are you mean? one of? Are you one of those guys that like you know you fall in love no. really quickly? No, no. I mean, sure? I just I've had failed failed relationship attempts and uh this one is is she's like perfect you know you know how like okay this is gonna sound sappy and just dumb oh, but, no. yeah. but 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 <laughs> you know how they say when you find the right person you just know you know that old cliche yeah it's well, completely false but go ahead well I, I actually felt it for the first time with this girl what? so I kind of believe in it, to be honest with what you. What does now. it feel like? Oh, he is in love. Listen to that. Oh, I, I kind of believe it. It's happening now. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, there's a catch, though. My life. There's all, dude. There's more than one catch. First is of all, is it really <laughs> a guy? Is it really a man? No. no why would what? you say no, that? That's what awful. What's wrong with you? Well, you no. said that there's a catch. That's no. no she, there's a. You're saying there's. You're I like, thought he was going to be. A there's catch, a difference right? between there's a catch and there's a penis. There's okay. a complete difference yeah. in the two of them. All right. What is it? All right. Um, she's engaged and she's getting oh. married in May. What? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, now, all right. What's most stumbling block? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a huge catch, dude. No, but, well, I mean, let me ask you this. You obviously, you obviously talk to this girl. This isn't like a love from afar sort of a thing, is it? No, no. We actually just became best friends over a period of time. And that just evolved into something else. What do you mean it evolved into something else? Are you guys actually have? is she having an affair on her fiance? No, no, we've never done anything. Oh, oh well, they're just the friends on. So it's, you're just—it's yeah. more of an emotional thing, you know. Uh, oh yeah. God! Do you Does go she shopping know? With I know. Her? Why am I always bringing this down? Can we? Let's no, you're not. Bring, listen, you're no. not bringing me down. I just want to delve into the into yeah. the mind that is Chris Crest. Listen, when right, I look at your right. when I look at your right, photo, I think like a Vegas uh, type performer. And and now you're telling me you're in love with a with an engaged woman. And yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But has she reciprocated your, her feelings? I mean, does she feel the same way about you? Um. Uh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. She does. I d- dude, that too. Way too much hesitation there. No. Well. I. Well. I'm trying. You know. I'm trying to respect her privacy too. Well. I, no. Yeah. Listen. Nobody knows who she is. No. I mean. Come on. I. I'm just curious if yes, it's like. Yes. She does. Yes. She does. Uh, and, uh, are you gonna pull a graduate, dude? <laughs> are you gonna be you're like? <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, you feel like a horrible person, but it's like it, it couldn't. So like what? Nobody is, planned this. So what is she gonna do? Is she gonna pull like a notebook move and and ditch the X Men and, and go off and help you redo a house? What do you, what's gonna happen? Man, I have no idea. I well, have no idea. When it's is never she, a dull moment in the life of Chris Kaslarski? Well, I guess not. What is she? Uh, when is she getting married? May. May. Oh, I have Dude, a question. That's right around, yeah. Are you gonna yep. be? Are you gonna like open up the church doors and be like, I object? Yeah. And, like, and you're going to be that I guy? I dream I did that. <laughs> While holding, like, a yeah. boom box above, above your head. <laughs> in yeah, your exactly. eyes. Like, just, like, no. say anything. <laughs> of, when they ask you, you know, if anyone adjusts, just fire off a flare gun, then drop a smoke grenade and just sweep <laughs> out of there, dude. That's the way to do you it. You know, I have uh, I have sacrificed a lot of my personal life for this show. I just, wanna, I just want that to be. How? Yes. What? Remember, remember what, when we well, read? I don't, know. I don't know what's happened we to tried Chris. To, we tried to hook him up with Holly. Yeah. And, yeah, that didn't go well at all. Well, how it? is that him sacrificing no, his that personal? That didn't go well at all. Wait, you guys Whose fault is that? Holly? No, we didn't hook him up with Holly. You read Wait, his uh, internet uh, thingamajig. Uh, oh, that was his own fault for giving us the, the, the profile name. Why did right. you do that? Wait, back up, back up. <laughs> First of all, what have you sacrificed personally from being a part of the show? Have people been pissed because they're. Their business was out on the show? We'd never mentioned any names. No, no I'm saying I've okay. sacrificed my personal life. I've thrown it out there for the good of the show. All of us have. Dude, yeah, I had was... my nipples hooked up to electric things in front on the internet. And, and, and you have beautiful nipples. You should be proud of them. You didn't see any nipples. See, dude, it's not sacrificing. It's just flashing. When, yeah. when a guy opens his overcoat on the subway, he's not sacrificing his <laughs> genitals. He's just flashing them at you. <laughs> All you've done is flash your personal yeah, life. It's he, totally different. Yeah, he gets to keep them. Yeah, it's not like you, it's not like you burn them on an altar. 
That's true. That's true. That's an interesting perspective. I was yeah. not analyzing before. And, and here's the thing. Once you put it out there that you're looking for somebody and we get you interested in, in mm-hmm. a person, that, now you're on your own, dude. If it didn't work out with Holly, I mean, I, and I, listen, I'm not being crass or yeah. uh, belittling you. I'm just saying once once you're in there, well, what do we have to do with that? You're All the, we can do is give you really bad advice. Right. <laughs> Wait. Are you telling me not to take your advice? No, no, we're not saying don't take it. We're just saying that's generally not, my advice. Yeah, not, might not be the best <laughs> advice, is what we're saying. The advice might not be valid or, or, or poignant. Ooh, I have a question. Yes, Tiffany has yes, a question. Tiffany. If you do the objecting thing, can you please record it, like in some way? Like, can you have someone record it video wise or like uh-huh. objecting sound wise for far. the show? Why not? If, could, could you reference double special as well? Could you like? <laughs> In the name of J.B. Lee and the double special crew, like, play me up as a leader. Yes, yes, yes. In the name uh, of J.B. Lee and the double special crew. Listen, uh, let me let me throw this out there because I don't think we've talked about this. There is there is a fiance in the picture that have you met this dude? Is he big? No. No, I haven't. Does he lift? Does he lift? I hope not. I'm sure he lifts something, but. Do you uh does he know that you exist? Do you think has he you guys have never run into each other like even at a social event? No, we're, I mean he he knows we're just friends. Oh, well, he, well, you know. Thinks. I, I, well, I don't want to say <laughs> thinks we're just friends cuz nope. it sounds real deceiving. But, but that's the truth. That's the truth. It Chris. is, but it just sounds so bad, you Well, know? I can't help you with that. Have you drunk his beer? I know. Yeah, have you tr- have you drank his beer? You haven't had sex in his bed, have you? Did you break bread? What? There's too many <laughs> questions going on. I know. I'm sorry. We got a little excited. We, we, we I, I, we're living vicariously through you. You're in an affair that I would I, I could never do that. I would be so afraid He's, that I would be dude, stopped. My life light. is an open book, but a horrible book. It's a. I, I would. It's say a it's, book you would have put down by now. Sounds like a pretty good romance novel to me. And it smells <laughs> like a big dog, doesn't it? Like a, <laughs> it's Saint <Yeah>. Bernard. <laughs> It's, it's all slobber. Yeah. It's a book that's covered with slobber. Well, what do you, I mean, what are you going to do, Chris? Are you going to continue on in this vein and hope that she changes her mind at the last minute? Or are you going to just say, yeah. hey, you know what? Yeah. yeah. Really? I'm just hoping uh, hoping for the best. Um, you only got a couple months to wait. Yeah, Tiffany? I have another question. Yeah, right into the mic. Make okay. So, like, let's say she breaks up with him and then she goes with you. Are you going to then be worried that maybe she's going to do the same thing to you? That's a good question. That Ooh. is every woman's perspective. Well, Everyone's perspective is giving me the same question. Well, <laughs> that's like, because once <laughs> once a per, that's just, people have patterns. People True. have patterns. That's why they can predict where asteroids go. That's yeah, like um, Twitter. Yeah, she's no, trending I right now. I, I really don't. I'm not worried about that. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know why? Because Chris Kaz right now is in the true love thing, and true mm. love defeats all. Blind. Well, I don't know if it's blind, but people believe. Listen, when I was with my I wife, if you had, my ex-wife, if you had asked me if she would cheat on me in our first like two year or two of marriage, I would have been like, come on, you're crazy. We were in love with each other. Because love is blind. Well, it's not blind, but blind. You, you choose not to believe that your partner could do that. But yeah. really, when it gets right down to it, you don't know what, they, what they're capable of. You don't know. Jordan, well, I didn't let know. Let me paint this perspective. You oh. meet somebody. Okay, you met your wife, Chris. Yes. And obviously, you married her because you, you think she's the best thing in the world. It was the but, right thing to do. No, I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> but you, had that, you knew that. Feeling. But my point is, and my perspective is, okay, you meet that person. Well, what if you thought you had that before, and then somebody else made you realize that you didn't have everything you thought you did? All right. Let me let me give you a little. How old are you, Chris? 30. All right, let me. I'm. I got a little couple of years on you. Let me give you a little perspective. I had a few. Uh, listen, I'm not a Lothari. I'm not a Playboy. But <laughs> this is what I've noticed. You can. I believe, at least me personally, that you can have that feeling many times in your life if you put yourself out there enough times. I think that the initial meeting of somebody and the initial realization that this person is similar to you in nature, and that they that you guys have an affinity for the same things that you connect on a certain level. Uh, that can happen with multiple. I think there are there's the right one. Uh, there are multiple right ones for one person. Whether or not you go out there and and, and seek them is is beyond. If you sit at home, if you don't go anywhere, then guess what? You're only going to meet one or two right ones, maybe. Uh, but if you're out more, you're out more social. Listen, you're a comic. You're out in the club. You're, you're going to meet a lot of people. Well, I mean, Jordan doesn't really right. go out. I don't go out. But I really, <laughs> yeah, I honestly either. believe that. I think that the initial meeting of somebody and that initial sort of uh you know the buttery the butterfly thing where you're feeling like oh this is a great thing that happens with everyone and it all changes to the same thing after a certain amount of time once you get used to them once you get used to their nuances uh and you become uh, you know comfortable with somebody (laughs) even tiffany when we first met tiffany tiffany thought we were sliced bread uh, but <laughs> I'm over it. I'm yeah. over it. Yeah, now she's like, right. yeah, now she's like, eh, I could do without. You know, no. whatever's that exciting, it turns into comfort, and then it edges into hatred and misophonia <laughs> and resentment. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, okay. Look, listen, Jordan put his negative spin, but I re- I think you're in this phase now where it feels new and fresh and it's exciting. I'm. I don't so you, know. So you think it's the honeymoon phase type thing? Well, you say honeymoon, but she's getting ready to marry somebody else. So I think I don't know. You may be a distraction for her. I don't know the girl. I haven't talked to her. If you want to have her call, we, I'd love to talk to her and talk about it. We can have her call in the air and find out what she's going to do. I mean, oh, that's a good idea. May- maybe maybe she can call know. the show and, and let us know if she intends to leave her fiance. I mean, if you, you know, if you want to get to it, let's get to it. My best advice is to do exactly what Chris just said. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I think when you first meet someone, like you said, there's the rush of feelings, and then eventually they just kind of like fade out if you wait long enough. Right. You Listen, get, Tiffany- you start out with rush of feelings, and you end up with Mongolian feelings. They're not as nice. <laughs> sure. Should I see if we can get her on the phone? Is she there now? Well, I don't know. I'll call her. Listen, if she, I, I, I would love to talk to her. If you want to get her on the phone, I'd love to. What's her name? Je- uh, I don't want to say. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll call do, her. Really. All right, I'll call her Bet. Bet Betty. We'll call I was going to say yeah. Bethany. Whatever. I don't know where That's Bethany fine. came okay. from. Bethany. Hang on, let me see if I can get her on. Yeah, see if you can get her on. All right, we got Chris Kaz on the phone right now. Uh, if you're just joining us on Double Special, Chris is uh, dating this girl who is engaged no, to be. No, he's not dating her. Well, yeah, kind of. Uh... He said there's stuff going on. Yeah, he's, that he's, sounds like dating to me. He's seeing her. All right, well, I'll ask her. He I'll insinuated ask her. the doing of the sex things. No, I don't think he said that. Anyway, she's engaged to be married, so Chris is in a pickle. Where is he at? I mean, Chris, are you sure you want to push this to this to the because this will put it right out yeah, there? Yeah, you're pushing you it to the limit, dude. No, not for me, but for him. I know that's what I said. This well, is he's exciting. willing. Listen, he's willing to sacrifice. Do you he's think he just it. made this whole story up? We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> that's my suspicion. You think it's not he's real? Gonna, I think he's going to put Mario Cantone on the phone. <laughs> We should have said Leprechaun. Play Mario Cantone real quick while he's getting her on the phone. All right, this, a- is, this is Mario Cantone and Steam Pipe Alley is Richie Morales. Oh, my God. You know, my baseball team is sponsored by Dreckman's Butcher Shop, and a couple of days ago, Mr. Dreckman gave us this huge turkey for winning the pennant. Oh, I'm going to shoot myself already. Wanted it, but we- yeah, oh, wait. Yeah, Did we so drop that the was gun? awful. Oh, he's call dropped. Really? Uh, All right, maybe well- he doesn't know how to do both things. No, we'll figure it out. He'll call- oh, wait, he's calling back. All right, anyway, we'll pick it up. Hey, Kaz, you there? Yeah, I couldn't get her. I got her voicemail. Ah, crap. Ah, uh, well, uh, listen, we're on next uh, week. Do you want us to leave a yeah, voicemail for? Week. Yeah, it'd probably be good to give her some preparation too. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't want preparation because she has time to Let's think about it. Let's do it next week. That it's, will be it's good. so much. Yeah, don't tell her, but you know, see if she can okay, be free during the show. And we'll maybe, talk. To- maybe we can get Brad McCrain to write an Australian love song for you. <laughs> I'll see you in a diversion. If you're listening, and you can do that for me. Yeah, that, that, that ought to muck uh, things up real good. Yeah. <laughs> what, what name do you want us to use for it? Um, Katrina? I, I messaged, oh, no, that won't work. Can't say. I, I think it's something. I think it's something. The right. Ballad of Kaz can, and Batrina. If you can incorporate a didgeridoo, that would be great. What was that? If you can incorporate a didgeridoo into the song, that would be great. Didgeridoo? What is a didgeridoo? Didgeridoo. I don't know what that is. It's a musical instrument. It's an Australian instrument. Oh, wow. Well, is that wild, the thing that goes, is that the, the right, okay, I got yeah, it. Okay. I, I never knew what it was called. I knew it was called that wom wom wom. That's, mm-hmm. I call it the Aborigine wind instrument. Wom wom wom. All right. I call it well, the that's wubs. Not politically correct. All right. Well, listen, Kaz. Are you got. How are the shows going there for you in Dallas? As, if you don't They're know, going great, man. We got another show on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, pretty excited about that. We got a lot of great local comics coming out, and as always, it's a free show, so it's it's you know you're getting a lot for bang for your buck, if you will. Yeah. Um, you filling them up? I, you getting a crowd in there? I'm sorry. Are you filling it up? Are you getting a crowd in there? You know, it's hit or miss. Yeah. Um, some days are better than others, and and I've been having a problem keeping up with my work schedule and everything, trying to prepare for the show. It's it's hard doing everything, and yeah. And a lot of the times, it's like you know, I have a week of preparation for for exposing it to everybody. So yeah, it's um, it's been. It's a real pain in the butt, but it's well, fun, and I love doing it. Yeah, well, if you're in the Dallas area and you want to check out Kaz, uh, tell everybody where they can see you, where this is happening, and where they can check out online. For sure, for sure. Um, the show is called The Joker's Wild Comedy Show, and it's going to be at the House of Blues, Dallas, 10 p.m. on Friday, March 8th. And uh, you can go to the House of Blues website, and uh, it's right there, House of Blues, Dallas' website, and it's right there in the ticket area. All right, cool. Well, listen, Kaz. Call back next week if you can get the the girl on the phone. Let's talk to her and find. I mean, I, unless you don't want to push it, because this this if you get her on the phone and we talk to her, we're definitely she's definitely gonna know that you have feelings. I don't know if you've actually mm-hmm. told her that. Oh, she knows. She, she knows. knows. So, and mm-hmm. I and I'm not gonna be mean to her, but I just I'm curious. What is she gonna do? Right. I'm curious. For sure. I, be, <laughs> I bet you are, dude. Have you spent a lot of money on this girl? 
No, not at all. She's not like that at all. But she already neat. has somebody paying for her stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, there you go. No. Oh, bam! Yeah, Tiffany yeah, Barber. Yes, but no. He's like the beta male in the elephant seal herd. <laughs> sneaking in there. Oh, bazinga. All right, Cass. Well, listen, as always, a pleasure hearing from you. Good luck this week. Have good shows. Don't listen. Thank let you. it let it happen the way it's going to happen. If you can get her on the phone next week, give us a call and we'll talk to her. Okay. All right. Well, she's probably going to know by the way because she I got her listening to the show. Does she like so, the show? That's why she's not an answer. She does like the show. Okay. She well, like the show. that's a start. Oh, there we go. She, okay. I like her. That we need to make it a little funnier. Uh, oh. I'm like, well, and I'm sure this doesn't help. <laughs> No, uh, listen. I funny comes from real life. If anything, Jordan, if I I, I have learned uh, doing improv is that sometimes if you try to force the funny, it just doesn't come out right. Right. But exactly. Right. Yeah. That's why I'm you just sit there. Like that on the burner. Yeah. Uh, What's you, that, Jordan? You strain and just nothing comes out but some noise. And it's yeah. Just awful. <laughs> it sounds like a bad. That sounds like yeah. a bad bowel movement you're having. That's yeah, what he's that's, talking about. All right. All right, buddy. Well, listen. Always a pleasure hearing from you. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Yes, sir. Sounds good. I'll keep in touch. All right. Roll them out, Bye. Jordan. Kaz the comic, ladies and gentlemen, bringing his love problems here to the double special show. <laughs> Turn a love line for a second. He That's always right. has love problems. Oh, awesome, dude. That poor bastard. I like oh. it, though. It's funny. 727 493 2055 is the number. You can check us out in various places, various places on the web. Tiffany Barbie, tell everybody where they can hit us up digitally, please. Ooh. Yeah. Do it. Okay, so doublespecialshow.com is our main one. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're watching us on Ustream right now. Mm -hmm. Also, we're on YouTube, backslash Double Special Comedy. Mm -hmm. Subscribe, please. And like. Like, even my mom figured out how to like videos. If you guys, when you watch the videos, just click the little like button underneath. What's wrong? Right now, as you're watching, yeah. look down and be like, like. <laughs> okay? I like, I like them. I, I, I yeah. What does and that do? Does that bump up our... My mom goes, I watched the episode, and guess what? I clicked like. Ooh, she so you guys out. click like. And I'm telling you right now, dude, if we call your mom, she's going to get into the show. She actually may be a regular caller. We're on Facebook. Yeah. I, think she will, I think we have the makings of a parental comedy and correspondent. And we're on Twitter. That would be weird. Mm -hmm. Go on. At Double Special, mm -hmm. and at Tiffany Comedy, mm -hmm. and at Slow C, and at All the Blue Jays. All the Blue Jays? And is that's that your thing? Yeah, and that's at Mystify Me Babe Jays. is Crystal, and at McLean underscore Brad is Brad, and at Kaz the Comic is Kaz the Comic. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. who else do we? Oh, who cares? I don't know. I, no, yes, Jordan. I, I, I may be the only I may be the only person that knows. Ross and I may be the only person that knows what, the, what your Twitter name actually means. What? He All likes the Blue, the Blue Jays. No, he's obsessed about the Blue Jays, dude. The he, team? No, no. It has a, Jordan with a oh, sports Oh, is it a team? band? No. no. Actual Blue Jays that hang out on his patio. He's got like a little oh. patio with a thing out that goes outside. <laughs> he's got French doors that open up. And the Blue Jays come. He, Dude, he's got like a working relationship with the... Have you named any of the Blue Jays? No. But you're feeding them though, right? They come, they they beg. They come and they ask for almonds. And I give them, I share my delicious almonds with them. And we're all buddies. It's all good. <laughs> Sometimes they sing their secret song to me. What's their secret song? It's a delightful song. Right in the mic. What do you mean, delightful song? It's like it's a, a song that they play, and they, do, you know, they don't play it, they sing it, but it's amazing. It's I like, know what it is. It's distinctive for you? It's different than what they. Uh, no, I don't think it's distinctive for me, but you rarely, you rarely hear it because it's so quiet and it's so beautiful. What? You don't think of Blue Jays being able to make this tuneful, <laughs> melodic music. He's just letting wild animals in through his French doors. They don't come all the way. Uh, Way, Not and now. They just hop in on the rug a little bit and say hello. <laughs> Do they sing Feed the Birds from the Mary Poppins movie? No. What? None of your filthy human music. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> uh, I'm very excited for Mike. And I, uh, again, I think we'll have Mike Rivera on the show next week uh, to talk about something. his thing. What's that? All right. I can't wait till he does his full set. They were very excited. They, this could be a big thing for him. It could be a, a game changer. Oh, yeah. No. It could be a game changer. Oh, yeah. Should we talk about, what do we want to talk about? Want to talk about the stun thing next, or you want to talk about uh, oh, her, your sad story? Which one do you want to do? Because I want oh. to talk about either of those uh, things. I like the stunt. The stunt? Uh, All right. So if you've been if you've been keeping up with the show, we have done a number of stunts. First stunt that we did, Jordan, what was the first real stunt that we did? The eating of the silkworms. Yeah, silkworms and? Terrible. Oh, the jellyfish. Yeah, jellyfish. Now, Tiffany, jellyfish. you tell everybody you are a vegetarian, right? Yes. Strictly vegetarian. Yes. So for you to eat another insect or a, you know any sort of living thing, for you, it's a pretty big step. Yeah, I didn't like it. She well, but I mean, you didn't like the taste of it, but also it was like against the rules, really, for you. Yeah. Well, I just don't like the taste of meat. It's not like I don't. I wouldn't really call jellyfish or silkworm larvae meat. 
Well, but, I know, but that's why I'm a vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> no, listen. All well, here's the thing. All three of us did it. So we got through it. And listen, it was a good show. It was fun to do. Mm-hmm. Then the second stunt that we did, the girls came up with, right? <laughs> because yeah. Jordan's a- back was hairy. That's right. That was a Halloween stunt. Uh-huh. And so we waxed Jordan's back live on the air. Uh, we waxed a, the most ridiculous looking uh, jack o' That That jack o' her face was awful, but it was funny yeah, it was to do it. It was the first attempt. It was a draft. It was <laughs> soft. Yeah. All right, so that was awful for Jordan. And if you want to check it out, it's uh, the Jack a Man O' Lantern is what we called mm-hmm. it. And you can check out that episode as Jordan moaned like, oh, it was so pitiful. I screamed like a... Yeah. No, you didn't scream. It was like this moaning, like... It was like a, almost like a Chewbacca. <laughs> it was awful, dude. It was really bad. <laughs> Okay, and so then, uh, and that got, everybody loved that as well. So then Marty came up with the third stunt that we did, which involved me, and that was a couple weeks ago, and that's where we hooked up uh, fetish electrical nipple clamps to my nipples underneath my shirt. And by you, this was real. We actually did this. And then you guys picked the words, and I got shocked every time I said the word, or a curse. It was, yeah. I mean, we got a song out of it, too. Yeah, we got a song out of it, which is a very funny song uh, that Brad McLean did. And so... Now we're trying to come up with other ideas. And I like to, you know, I like the idea of brainstorming. I enjoy that. But Tiffany, you don't really, you're not into the brainstorming thing. You just want to let it come, or you kept saying organically. Well, I just felt like a good idea would pop up eventually, and I didn't want to force it. And it okay, did. But, but brainstorming is an organic thing. You realize that that is a process of organic sort of, right, Jordan? Am I right? It's sort of an organic thing to brainstorm. You're just letting things come out. Oh, try this. Let's try this. Anyway. No. Really? That's you're going to say no? No, organic yeah. involves like no fertilizers or pesticides uh, in, in, the, in the thinking process. Okay. Well, I just meant don't force it. Like a good idea, like the man lantern idea just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. And so did the uh, All right. nipple thing. I don't like to operate popped out of nowhere. I like to mm. set things up. And, and anyway, so some of the ideas that we were coming up with, and Travis Knight, thank you for your suggestions. Uh, they all involve Tiffany go out, going out into public and somehow like confronting a, a person that was not part of the show, which yeah. I don't really see you doing. Yeah, I don't like being mean. Well, no, not being mean, but just, you know, like doing, this, you know, what do you call What do you call them? Like public? Like, yeah, interacting with other human beings. <laughs> you don't really, if you don't know them, Tiffany's like, man, I really, you weren't feeling it. And, I, and to be honest with you, and Crystal said the same thing, we just don't see you having that improvisational background where you can kind of, I think you would not be able to keep a straight face. You would be like, yeah, this is stupid. I don't want to do this. So, Travis, thank you. They're good ideas. Maybe for Jordan and I at some point, but... Uh, not for Tiffany. I I want to do something like totally over the top and put you in a situation that was completely alien to you, uh, which I, all I could think of was like bungee jumping or actually doing a tandem skydiving jump. I thought that would be awesome to see you do that and see you get pushed out of a plane when you refuse to leave at the plane after 10 minutes. But anyway, none of those ideas were biting. So last night, uh, Tiffany and my wife came up with the idea for the next stunt, which we'll be doing when? A couple like, couple of weeks, probably? No, well, I think uh, every, the last stunt was in October. I think we should wait like a month and a half at least. A month and a half? Really? Otherwise, we're going to be constantly like... Doing stunts. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's not your then turn it next. it will be you... my turn again. This is, like final <laughs> des- this is like Final Destination, the movie, where like I keep <laughs> like avoiding like a hard thing, and then it just keeps coming around in a circle. Yeah, but you're not going to get your head cut off with a plate yeah. of glass. I mean, you this know, one is I kind of feel like it's bad. leading up to that point. This, yeah, this stunt is not so much bad or painful. Like mine was painful, his was painful, yours mm-hmm. was mildly distasteful, and this one is a little bit but embarrassing. But I'm a girl. The ne- uh, well, no, the, for this one, I have to say, but again, yeah. not my idea. I didn't come up with this, and Jordan yeah. didn't come this, up with this. This came out of your head. This came uh, right out of your head. And mouth. my wife's, which I have to. Well. All right, well, let me set this up and tell you what, where we got this from. Okay? <laughs> yeah, so, like, talk about Crystal I, I will. three weeks ago. I will. So a couple of weeks ago, we're having our creative meeting. As we do every Tuesday before the show, we get together and talk about what the show is going to be about and just kind of riff and yada, yada, yada. So I don't know how we got on the subject. I don't know if you guys remember. But uh, Crystal uh, said that oh, after, know. oh, you know how she got on the subject? We were talking about how vaginas get stretched out after you have babies. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. More the girls than us, because wh- yeah. we would know what that's like. I, I think we came in halfway in on that, and then we just walked <laughs> right back out of that one. And we were just like, what? It's like, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> one of those vaginas is mine. I, I don't want to know. So I, my wa- go Yeah, on. go ahead. No, go on. Now, my wife said that she got, and they're called, what, Benoit Balls? Yeah, Benoit. Benoit. So she had, not Wawa, who's was, was on fire right now. Benoit balls that you insert into the <laughs> vaginal cavity, in the <laughs> vagina, mm-hmm. and you use the Kegel method. Is it Kegel or Kegel? Kegel. Kegel. Use the Kegel method, which is clenching the, the I guess, the is it the uterine muscles? I don't I have no idea. I don't idea. know. 
So I'm medically trained. I don't know what muscles are. Somewhere up in the uterus. The Kegel muscles. The Kegel muscles. It must yeah. be. It wasn't after <laughs> Dr. Kegel? They're not uterine because dudes have them too, so it can't be that. Oh, do guys have Kegel muscles? You, yeah, you can do Kegels. All right. So, okay. So they use the Kegel the Kegel muscles to hold the Benoit balls up there, and it, and it, it, it exercises the vagina and makes it like not so you know stretched out. I didn't know there were such things. Well, but you've never had a kid, so why would you know that? Oh, you didn't know that the balls existed? Yeah. You've never heard of Benoit balls? No. Never, ever, like in a movie? You watch movies and stuff, nobody's ever made a reference to Benoit balls? They or... might have, and I didn't know what they were talking you about. You were like, hmm. I didn't even hear it. All right. So, what does it say about Kegel? There. Is it the... uh, it's, uh, well, it's uh, a name, exercise is named after Alfred Kegel. See, I knew it. Involving flexing the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor. Okay. 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 See? So, there you go. So anyway, so as we're talking about it, uh, Crystal, I said, she's got them, and, and Tiffany has never seen them before, so we bring them out. Mind you, it's a little odd to bring out <laughs> balls. They fit in her vagina. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and they came in a nice little ring case, like a hard ring case, so they don't get damaged. But they're like stainless yeah. steel ball bearings, basically. Yeah. But they had little engraved designs. I'm like, what? The? I, I, listen, I didn't even know she had them. So when, you got, when she started talking about them, I'm like, you have those? Like, you do that? Part of me was turned down. The other part was like, what the hell is happening yeah, in my own house? Yeah, you didn't even know. That's hilarious. I, well, why would I? I wouldn't know. That's something she does in private. It's not like she goes, listen, honey, uh, there's your dinner. I'm going to go in the back and get the Benoit balls and do my Kegel exercise. I, you know, I have no reason to know that. So, and as, look, as long as she's if she's working her vagina out, I'm okay with that. I, okay. I'm not going to stop her from working it out and making it better than it was. It's like making her vagina the new Steve, Steve Austin. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so, okay. So, we're talking about it. And then it just, it, I guess, did it yeah, pop into your head? Yeah, last night she brought out some kind of thing that reminded me of the balls. Oh, it was a, it was a uh, like a wrinkle thing she used, dermatology, yeah, and, and it, it takes the wrinkles out. It kind of reminded me of something weird like the balls. and then Like a personal popped. massage or a vibrator situation. Yeah, and then right. it popped into right my in. brain. Mm-hmm. The, that the stunt idea and the stunt is you ready for this? I'm you ready? Sorry, I wish mom. we had a drum roll right now. You ready? My mom doesn't like it. Okay, so you already told your mom about this. Yeah, I had to warn her. Oh my wanted. god! All right, tell everybody because now I, okay. all the guys that listen to the show right now are like perked up, sitting like, "What is so, the stunt?" For God's sake! We obviously have to buy a new ball because I'm not using ones that have been in Crystal's vagina. Well, uh, yeah, obviously, I'm not, I don't. But want, okay. so Crystal and I are going to have a contest on who can hold it in our vagina the longest. All right, so, so we're going to stand <laughs> beside each other and the guys are going to try to get us to laugh and there's going to be all sorts of things and then whoever drops it first loses. All right, and the name of the stunt is give me the give me the full, you know, WWF what title. Did we come up with? It was the Battle Royale, dude. It was the Oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the oh, double do it. Do it, baby. The double special Benoit Battle Royale. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm tin sorry. buckets. We're going to put tin buckets under <laughs> between their legs. That's the way we'll know. Now, in no way are we going to... Listen, we, we don't curse on the show, even though we could. And and Lord knows we do in our private lives. But mm-hmm. uh, I don't. Well, yeah, you do. I don't swear. You have when? to curse. I, I have never you ever heard, heard you. it? No. Then I don't. Does she? No. Yes. Talk about I everything never. else, dude. Sure. I said the word crap, maybe. And crap. my mom, sorry, mom. All right, so you're apologizing. See, that's why I want to stop. I want your mom to call the show, and I want you to be allowed to say crap without apologizing to your mom afterwards, because it's the whole thing is freaky. All right, anyway, so this is the stunt. There'll be no nudity, first of all, guys. We're not. You're not going to see them do them. And I don't know. Do you insert them prior or alive on the air, like you know, covered up? Oh well, no, we'll do it. We'll go out. And do it. So you got to walk in with them in inserted. I don't even know if I could. I've never had. I don't even That's know what what's going to happen. My wife is a seasoned. She's pro. a professional, right? She's but not even fooling around. Never mind. She's like the '74 Russian team. Uh, but I've Russian never team. had a kid, so maybe mine will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are much smaller than children, so if, if, if Crystal can hold them up there already, I don't know. I mean. All right, so they'll come into the studio. The, uh, my wife, beautiful wife, and beautiful Tiffany Barbie will be here with long dresses. You won't see anything. They will have the Ben Wallows up there, and it'll be Jordan and I's job and the callers. We invite mm-hmm. the callers to come in. Uh, we'll set them up with the headphones so they can hear everything. We'll be like playing uh, Twilight clips. And, <laughs> yes, uh, anything we can think of. Mm-hmm. And Jordan and I have a couple of surprises up our sleeves to try to make them drop the balls. Now, <laughs> what we have to decide is what is the punishment for the person that loses, right, Jordan? We were talking yes. about this. What punishment would be appropriate? Now, Tiffany actually brought in her own no! for punishment, which would be to eat the box of uh, no! sour cream and onion crickets. Now, when you say that, it doesn't sound believable, but go ahead, Tiffany. Take your headset off and go up and put this up in the camera. Show everybody these crickets. That you these brought are, in. Yeah, these are called crickets. Well, my student gave it to me. Yeah, okay, so so Tiffany's, Tiffany's uh, uh, karate or taekwondo students 
gave her a box. Let's go ahead and turn this to the camera and show this. This is an actual product. They're called crickets. Go ahead and pull the bag out and show everybody. Uh, yeah, pull it out right there, Tiffany. Pull the bag out and show everybody. These are actual, what are they, dried crickets? Yeah, just crickets. Why would you put sour cream and onion on? Look at that. That is just flavor. Yeah, I guess. Pull it back a little. It pull it back. Like, it looks like angry bees. There. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, so that's those are the. Do you really want that? Because I was thinking something more, a little more. I like the. I like. We still have the fetish. The fetish clamps, dude. We still have those. No, I don't you like just you put it on the finger and zip, bap, Give him a little bap, 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 That's what you thought for the punishment. No, I've got something better. But I'm oh, just saying, right. we, we still well, have that. On, something there, yeah. We have that on the table. So we got <laughs> crickets. If you have any suggestions for the punishment. Uh, for whichever girl drops her Benoit balls first, and I, this may be a first. I've listened to a lot of talk radio. I've never heard anybody <laughs> do this stunt ever. Cowhead did one where they had girls hook a string to their uh, uh, genitalia jewelry and try to lasso something on the ground. That's totally different. Now, this is what I'm worried I about. Yeah. What, okay, we'll get to the call in a second. Yes. Okay, what this is what me and my mom are worried about. Oh, see? Already, what me happens? And my mom. No, it's my mom and I, first My mom's all. afraid. What if I have to go to the hospital because it gets stuck in it? Why? They can't. No, no. What happens? No. Like, how will I get it out? Well, that you could say the same thing there's every no time you have intercourse. The what are you it? talking about? Yeah. But there's no string on the end of it like a tampon or something. All right. Hold that thought. Caller, oh. you're on the air. Welcome to Double Special. Who are we talking with? Hello, it's Brad. All right. Don't say another word, Brad. Do not say another word. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, we got another caller from Australia calling it. Yeah, he's too long-winded. The guy from Australia? Yeah, he's too long-winded. Wait, what are Australians doing? Is he a comedian? <laughs> he's a famous Australian hero. Yeah, he's too long-winded. Well, that's what happens when he comes from a penal colony. Brad McLean! <laughs> <laughs> There's Brad McLean. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you continue to amaze me with your skills. You are amazing. That intro is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's laughing at his own intro. He's like, yeah, I am pretty amazing. <laughs> it, it is awesome. What, what are you guys talking about? I just I just pick up the phone and all of a sudden I'm hearing about tampons with no strings. <laughs> Did no. you hear what we were talking about? No, he's at work. I, I felt like I was eavesdropping. All right. We're going to be doing a Benoit Battle Royale. Are you? What do they call Benoit balls in Australia? Do you know what they are? I didn't know what they were. No, I, I wouldn't have a clue. All right, they're 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 metal balls that ladies put up in their in their junk or what? What, the, what is the I don't. It's, it's called a vagina. Okay. You can say a vagina. I don't. Okay, I didn't know if you think. Brad, do you have another word for vagina that they say over there? Or is it? No, that's pretty standard worldwide. I think. <laughs> uh, you can agree. Yes, yes. No matter Hawking. what the language, but uh, yeah. So they're they're there apparently <laughs> to help strengthen the pelvic floor muscles. But so we're gonna make Tiffany and Chris's wife Crystal. Uh. Stand over tin buckets no. with, with metal balls up in their vaginas, <laughs> and then try and make them laugh. And the first one who drops it loses. Yeah, what do you think of that, baby? Uh -huh. Bloody hell! The standard of this show is bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We don't curse. However, I will bring my wife in and let her put stuff up her vagina. I know. It makes no sense to me. Here's the thing, though, Brad. This was not my idea. This was not Jordan's idea. This was Tiffany okay, and my wife's idea. But accidentally. I did not mean for this. This is like after they threatened me with like all sorts of crazy things. So First I of all, think of something different. no threats. No threats. Uh, and, and his wife owns the balls. All right. Well, you're gonna get your own balls, but I know I don't want to use yeah. her balls. That'd be gross. No, listen. I walked outside after the after we had this meeting, and they <laughs> talked about it. And I looked at Jordan. I was like, "Did that just happen?" He goes, "That just happened." Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so worried. I, I actually, I see it as uh, being able to kill uh, two birds with two balls. You could. Uh, it might be a chance to get Tom Hanks in there with his. You know, Forrest Gump here is really good with the um, table tennis. Listen, you can use the steel balls. You could use the table tennis balls like they do over in the Philippines and that, and, and off you go, Tom Hanks. Yeah, he can do the fastball where it goes in and out real quick. Attack, 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 attack. It's in and out like it ricochets off a wall. Uh. Listen, I, that's an image I don't want in my head. Tom Hanks smacking ping pong balls into my wife's vagina. I, I would, I could live my whole life without that vision. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm ashamed of even bringing it up. <laughs> 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 no, I appreciate that you did. I like the fact that you're willing to go there. Brad, We, I think we've surpassed you uh, with respect because we've been talking to you. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's Brad McLean calling from Australia. Uh, and you've talked about some of the things that happen in your local neighborhood like and like it's nothing. And it sounds like you live, you know, like on the on the River Queen. I, you know, you, you know, there's animals coming in and out and everything. I, it's totally unexpected stuff. 
But this week in Florida, literally right around the corner from us, uh, we had some serious crap happen. What? What, what went on? Well, uh, Jordan, you want to tell them what happened? It was uh, today? Yeah. yeah we live in Florida. Some dude uh, got swallowed by his own ground. <laughs> That's right. A gentleman, in, I'm not even kidding, a gentleman in Brent. Now, here's the thing. In Florida, we have a water table that shifts, and when there's no rain, uh, we have a huge aquifer underneath a lot of Florida that dries up, and it causes sinkholes. Do you, you guys have sinkholes in Australia? Yeah, I was looking at one last Friday, but it was only small. How, how small? Oh, like a your knee height. No, okay. Well, this guy in Brandon, <laughs> Florida, was sleeping like uh, in the middle of the night, the ground opens up underneath him, sucks him down 100 feet into the ground. His brother tries to save him, can't save him. They never found him. They, they're burying him right where he got sucked in. That's terrible. I know. It's, it's <laughs> awful. I, don't, I can't even sleep at this point. <laughs> you can move to Australia, folks. It's, it's unsafe there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 kind of, it's, it's horrible and... and Funny, but I feel bad about laughing. Well, no, don't because it's a comedy show. Now, listen, I, in, in no way am I. It's just an amazing thing that happens. Like you think of all the things that could happen to you in your own house, ele- electrocution. Maybe you fall and you hit your head on a tub or whatever. But you don't expect this to happen. Go and play the clip of the uh, firefighter. This is a description yeah, when he came on the scene. Let's see. Let's see if this pops up. Listen to this, Brad. This is insane. I don't know if this is the same one. You know, it's not the same one. I I couldn't get that to work. Oh, you couldn't get it to work. No, oh, let's see. Here we go. Oh, listen to this, Brad. Listen to this. It's lots of white noise. It's really cool. <laughs> He's going to talk if we made this. Uh, oh, there we go. We're here to uh, talk about a situation that's uh, evolving, continues to evolve. But first of all, let me say our hearts go out to the Bush family during this terrible time. They're dealing with a lot of questions, a lot of unknowns. And uh, I'm going to help you try and understand. Born, what born, born. Oh, kidding. Why do you pick the, the most long winded? From the bedroom uh, in the back of the house. There you go. They rushed in. All they could see was part of a mattress uh, sticking out of the hole. Uh, essentially, the, the floor of that room had opened up. Um, they could hear the nephew in the hole, but they could not see him. Um, his brother jumped in to try and extricate him out. Uh, could not see him. Uh, okay, he- I'm sorry. The ringtone in the background is not making this any <laughs> Any easier to, to listen to. Dude, all I'm picturing is like <laughs> H.G. Wells, like he's sleeping, and the next thing you know, the Morlocks grab him and just drag him right into a hole. I The whole thing is, I can't even. Well, yeah, I'm no detective, but I'm picturing in my head that he may have had a wife that was trying to tunnel out of the property and maybe <laughs> the tunnels have collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but like, like I'm saying, in Brad's place, you worry about things coming to the house. You don't worry about your house killing you, like literally swallowing you up. This guy got swallowed up, taken down. Mm. They, they couldn't even get him. He's that's it's gonna be like his that's his grave site now. Yeah, that's it. Holy crap, dude! They couldn't even get their possessions out of yeah, the house. That, yeah, that is unbelievable. I know. Uh, so I think we got you beat. Unless you can come up with something like. I don't know, yeah. stove eats guy or something. I, I don't know what you guys have to do to beat that. but They're like 500 kinds of deadly spiders and snakes. <laughs> something like that would be hard to beat. <laughs> well, well, we've got all the deadly ones over here, but I'm not even going to compete with the old earth swallowing up. That's uh, sort of, you've, right. you've really annoyed someone if that's happened. <laughs> yeah, just watch, just watch. By next week, Australia will have like venomous sinkholes. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly... To, to be honest, if snakes could talk, you know, when they and if they could walk, um, if they had little legs and they could speak English, they'd probably just look at you and go, "How you going?" When you're walking past, they've got no interest in jumping on you and biting you. But the I know. swallowing you is a whole different story. How do you you listen? First of all, you're asleep and you don't know what's happening. The next thing you know, you wake up. The grounds are rumbling. So you think maybe okay. When you wake up, you think all right, maybe this is an earthquake. You can deal with an earthquake, right? Get to a door frame. What do they yeah. say? Get in the bathtub. Go but what do you do when you get up and your bre- your bed is literally going through the bottom of the floor I, and you don't have a basement? You know what I'm saying? There's no basement in your house. Yeah. You yeah, say, man. help, help, apparently. <laughs> if it, I think if it was happened. going up, if it was going up in the air and, and like hovering, you could explain. You, I mean, you could probably think you've had a little bit too much to drink, but when it's going through the floor, that's a, <laughs> Dude, That's insane. Terrible. I know. And again, I, I'm not laughing because of, because a guy died. It's obviously awful. It's just one of those insane things where you think that'll never happen. 
And then it does. I mean, Laszlo, who's been on our show, his house, he, that's how he got his house. It, it, it started cracking because there was a sinkhole. But, I mean, no, we've never heard in Florida of anybody actually getting swallowed. And it happened again today. Didn't it happen again today? Chris said somebody's house opened up and she was in the house when a uh, sinkhole happened. No. The she, whole state's going to pot. Yeah, it's, it's like Swiss cheese. Here. It's Swiss cheese. The whole thing is Terrifying. Swiss cheese. Yeah, I need to move. Now, in Australia, though, there was a guy that got bit by a deadly snake, right? The Taipan just this past week? Um, probably, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but uh, everyone does. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like a, it's funny how it's a big story over here, like, oh, man in Australia gets bit by the Taipan, or they're like, yeah, again, it happened again. Well, what is what is the <laughs> no, big you only have to go to You only have to go to a, a hospital and they'll give you some antivenine and off you go again. <laughs> it's a, right as rain, there you go, on your way, sell some fish, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. I am. I'm. I'm continuing to be impressed by you. I'm continuing to be humbled by the fact that you would take time to do the intro uh, for yourself, which I love, by the way. I think it's awesome, and also the song. The song that we played last week. You. You. You're doing a great job, dude. Thank, yeah. Thanks very much for that. I, mean, I appreciate that you uh, take time to play them and, and all that. It gives me something to do. It keeps me off the streets and. You really do a mayor favor, to be honest. Well, I mean, you say that, but yet you're going to festivals, you sell fish. You're not, it's not like you're sitting home doing nothing, dude. You make it sound like, oh, poor Brad, he's just sitting home, nothing's going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually do have plenty on the plate. I know. So, and I know that's going on. And when's your next uh, big uh, musical gig? You got anything going on? Um, no, I've, uh, I'm going to go at Easter which is a few weeks away I think two or three weeks away I'm going to drive back to Victoria and, and meet up with um, some family and go camping and that kind of stuff so I really haven't made any plans and uh, after that I'm meant to be meeting up with some guys to do some writing and all that kind of stuff but right my diary uh, I don't waste much ink on my diary that's for sure well listen I, I, I'll throw this I know you're busy but I'll throw this out there if you ever want to do any sort of parody songs for us or anything like that it would be our pleasure to have them because listen the bottom line is, I'm into the talk, I'm into doing the show, but I'm not really good at doing like parody songs and at film editing, all that crap. Uh, I've been there, done that, I'm over it. I just want to talk and do my thing on the radio. But I invite anybody, if they want to uh, produce pieces for the show, please produce them. We will play them. We will put them up on the website. Uh, we're very proud to have you guys part of the show. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I've... So you said you're going to Victoria, right, a few days? Yes. Yeah, and I find it interesting. Yeah, yeah. That the premier of Victoria just resigned and said he loves the state, but a change in leadership is needed. Now, did you take uh, Ted Value there at face value? Are you planning to run for premier of Victoria? I will probably get the job. There's no doubt about that. I'm just going down to test the waters. (laughs) Go down to test the waters. (laughs) That's cool. What does a premier even do? Actually, this is is my – it's the anniversary right now of of being in Queensland, which is – the other end of Australia. I've been here for 13 years now, and I, I remember back to when I first got here. I didn't know anyone and all that kind of stuff, and you move to a new state, and, you, you know, all of a sudden you, it's a life change and all that. And I thought I should go and meet some people and, and get out and, and see the town, and I thought I'd go on a little mini tour or something like that. And uh, so I went down to... You'd have the little tours around your place that you go and see the sites. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'll go down to the shopping centre and... Um, and check out the notice board, and which I've done. And but when I say shopping centre, I mean public toilet block. And um, <laughs> when I say notice board, I mean the inside wall of the cubicle. And it said, uh, for a good time, uh, phone Rick. And I naturally assumed that Rick had a little tour operation. And to be honest, I don't know what kind of business he was running, but I didn't enjoy myself. <laughs> and, uh, I could hardly say if the van he had with the tinted windows was a tour bus. I, I doubt whether he's even licensed, to be honest. <laughs> so that was that was the 13 years ago, and since then I've uh, I've met a few people, and it's been good here. But now I think it is time to go back and be the premier of Victoria, like just, George just said. Just do it. Yeah, last night here there's an opening in the Vatican too. You might want to go check that out, see if you can get involved in that. All right, I'll be the Pope, the next Pope. <laughs> Listen, we were talking about the snake thing at the writing meeting. We came up with this sort of the weird uh, riffing on this idea of what our animal fear were. Like if we had to confront an animal or an insect at some point. Now, you live obviously in a place where, like he said, hundreds of different species. What you, what are you afraid of, Brad McLean? What, what animal are you afraid of? Um, I, if... If I was dressed as a seal and I came across a grizzly bear or polar bear, 
<laughs> polar bear. Oh, only polar if he was bear. dressed that as a seal. Only if he was dressed as a seal. I don't know where the hell you would get a yeah, seal with costume. Little, with whiskers and everything, probably. Whiskers. <laughs> with whiskers and everything. Yeah, it just wouldn't be the same if he didn't have the whiskers. Not a real seal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I think, I, I don't know, most animals, I mean, we, we grew up um, amongst, you know, wild pigs are pretty uh, aggressive sort of things, but and stuff like that. Any any sort of animal, to be honest, sort of wants to get out of your way to start with, I think. But, no, but there's uh, gotta be... I would like to be in front of nothing that wants to attack me. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I'm saying if, if you were in front of something, like, like for me, when I was a kid, my big... After I saw the movie Jaws... Uh, I didn't want to have any. I didn't want to be. I didn't even want to look at a shark in a tank. I no aquariums. I they scare the crap. Like I did. I, it took me like five years to go to the beach and go deeper than my knees. You know what I mean? Like th- that thought of being eaten alive by a shark frightens me to death. There's got to be something in there. Brad's gonna. He's not gonna give us anything. He's gonna be like, ah, whatever. That's eh, all. You know. He's too no, hardcore. Uh, <laughs> he's too tough. Yeah, no, he's tough. No, don't get me, don't get me wrong. You know, there's plenty that would eat you and, and all that. And I think if they do, well, you know, maybe you're on the menu and that's bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's on you, Betty. You shouldn't have been out there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's fair. What enough. about did you try the balloon technique when you're worried about sharks? What's the balloon technique? You remember I spoke about it last week where you put the fish frame under the water with a balloon on top of it and then you can swim, but if the oh, balloon starts yeah. popping about, you know there's a shark. What was that? Yeah. I don't even know that. Remember Tiffany, he you know? even put a picture on Twitter of it. Yeah. Oh, okay, I remember think I remember that. Explain it to me again. He had the balloon and like, you put it in the water and if it gets disturbed, right, that means that a shark's in the water, so don't get in it. But if it doesn't get disturbed, then it's okay to go in the water. Why do sharks hate balloons? Why, why yeah, couldn't it be what, another what it, fish? No, no, because it's got a it's got a fish uh, hanging off it. Like oh, bait. Okay, it's baiting. It's it's basically like a babysitter, so the kids can go swimming without any fear of getting attacked by a shark. Screw that, man! If there's yeah. a body of water that people swim in, and you have to test it for manning <laughs> things, I don't want to get in it. It I don't sounds wanna... like the crappiest anti-shark robot ever. <laughs> fish with a balloon. <laughs> it's very low tech. It's never. It's, yeah. yeah, it's never yet been praised by God. any. Uh, safe swimming organizations. Yes. Like Stop getting your robots from me, Animar. <laughs> <laughs> it's not sanctioned by National Geographic or the Jacques Cousteau Society. They're like, yeah, we can't really get behind that product. Well, I mean, Actually, I, but, David Attenborough did have his concerns about the whole technique. <laughs> no, but I, I understand where you're coming from, though, because you already have the fish. So you're like, listen, I got half of a thing here. Mm. Well, how can I use this? Oh, well, I got a shoestring. I'll put the shoestring on there. What else do I have? I just came from a party. I got this balloon. That'll work. I'll use that as a bobber, and then I'll tie this on here, and that's it. I get it. Very crafty. Yeah, we don't call it the party boat for nothing. <laughs> Jesus. If somebody gets too lippy, they just pop them off the side. Hang on to that balloon. Tell us what's happening. Tell us how, how the water is. All right, brother. Well, I thought you. I thought we were going to have like an English sort of uh, Australian spar last week. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was cool. Petri. Oh yeah, Petrocelli. He's a funny guy. I, I like him. He, the two of you guys together, I I could if you guys did. Uh, you guys should do a podcast together. That's what you should do. I honestly, uh, he was talking about the the little fella and the dog walk, and I was I legitimately couldn't uh, type a message to him. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's not funny to laugh at a short person, but one you know a little person, whatever you call them. But one getting pulled by that uh, such a diverse group of dogs. Mm-hmm. I, I I had. No, I mean, how does a whippet get in there? That's what I want to know. Oh, I couldn't, and I couldn't believe he had the the Rottweilers and everything. That, in my opinion, if I was that same person, I, I'd, well, for a start, I'd be in a pirate's outfit. But <laughs> secondly, I would, I would have tiny dogs to make me look heaps bigger. I know, right? You get like the little, mm. you know, little Paris Hilton dogs, the little crappy little Chihuahuas, and a little, but a friggin' Rottweiler next to a whippet. You know that Rottweiler is looking at that whippet like one day, dude. I'm just gonna bite your flank right off. I swear to God. It's bad enough I'm stuck with this dude back here, but being stuck with you with your little whippet hair, or, or a, even a, even a cowboy outfit, he could have rode the rode the um, yeah. whatever it was. What, I'm, I'm noticing a theme with Brad. Like if there's a dwarf involved, Brad wants a costume on him. I'm noticing that's where he wants to go with it. Mm-hmm. But imagine, you know, I was talking about that sinkhole before that only went to knee height. Yeah. Imagine if you had a, a, a little dwarf in a miner's outfit standing in there. That's up to his head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, this, this sounds like a fun game. We dwarf 
and random object, and then Brad can tell us the appropriate costume. <laughs> okay, let's try it. All right, so we got uh, all right, we got a dwarf standing next to a lawnmower. Brad, what outfit would go with that? Clown's outfit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tiffany, yeah, because what? imagine how much it would freak you out if you looked out and there was a little clown, a clown mowing your lawn. <laughs> Especially, especially if it wasn't like electric or gas, but it was one of those p- push wheel with the blade spinning thing. It was like you know just spinning. Yeah, and and he'd and he'd previously gone out and and sprinkled candy all over the lawn, so it was actually spraying candy up in the air. <laughs> I had that dream. When... <laughs> oh my god, dude, this is so wrong. With <laughs> Tiffany, uh, dwarf and something. What do you okay, got? Okay, a dwarf on a boat. Mm. Oh, that's. Oh, sailor's outfit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that would be um, cute. Every, everybody on the water wants to see a little seaman. <laughs> uh, that was almost too easy. Yeah, Jordan, all right, your turn. Come on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, a dwarf and an asbestos ceiling tile. <laughs> a, a what? A what? A, a fireproof ceiling tile. Asbestos. Oh, know. okay, yeah. Um, I would say a bowl of petrol. <laughs> As a yeah. costume? Dude, this is yeah, getting yeah, way conceptual. <laughs> this is like early Steve yeah, Martin could, stuff going on. Yes? Yeah, you sit in this bowl of petrol and just to prove how retarded the uh, <laughs> retardant the firewall is or retarded the idea is. No, I see, and I thought like a, some sort of a hazmat suit or like a respirator. I don't know. Like, you know, like, like, oh, you uh, you're never going to find one small enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would need the rest of the suit. You just put the hood over him. How would you dress a little person as a bowl of gasoline? I, I don't even know. That's what I'm saying. I know. The no. logistics of this are no, amazing. Just, I don't know. Just in a, a big fish bowl. Like, you you know, know, like a bowl, you can get them pretty big. I don't know, and man. Fill it with, you'd have to take it down and fill it up with a, with a petrol pump and yeah. then just bang, in you go, son. I heard there was like th- there was a midget dressed as a bowl of gasoline in the original draft of the Road Warrior, and they had to cut it out because they couldn't make the costume. <laughs> you know, you remember when you asked me my favorite film? I was almost going to say Mad Max, and I didn't think you'd know what it was. Well, that's what. That's, uh, no, are you serious? Really, dude? Yeah, yeah, dude. We wasn't the original Hills Have Eyes shot in Australia as well. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about. Uh, I'm talking about Australian movies. Like we were shocked. This is so. This is the thing of the difference between Americans and Australian. We were shocked that when you did your intro, you actually played "Men at Work." I thought that would be the most cliche Australian song to play, and yet you guys embrace "Men at Work." Like you're like, yeah, you know, we're like, oh, "Men at Work," Australian, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, I would have played. Yeah, oh, you know, I would have played that. I did. But but having said that, um, they just got fined for you know sued for millions and millions of dollars for for using the the tune of the whistle tune they said was out of uh, Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree and someone's gone and sued them for millions for it. Are you so serious? It's a bit of a fun. Holy use. crap, dude! Yeah, so don't use it. I, I would not use it if I was you guys. Yeah, well, listen, <laughs> it's not like we're until we start selling stuff off the air, then it's not an issue. But and as long as it's under thirty seconds, we're okay on the UStream feed. But uh, they're being sued because they used what a, a lyrics from a, from something else or an actual sound. Is that what you no, said? No, it was. No, it was that. It was bizarre. It was stupid in um, the fact that they had. There's a whistle in the uh, in the song, you know, and down under there's a there's a part of it that where you whistle, and uh, it, someone said it was taken off the tune to the. Uh, kids song, I guess. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, and they successfully sued him for holy for crap on sale. Yeah. That, well, that, that's, that's how crazy the world went. Uh, listen, I nothing. I just a... thought, yeah. I, I honestly, I didn't know. You know, like I thought, well, yeah. we'll, we'll use that song. They they would have never heard it. We live so no. far down. Under. Um, listen, I'm not worried about. It. Don't even sweat it. It's not a big deal. If if the sh- when the show takes off, we can rewrite everything. Hopefully. I, I'm telling you, let's just move from Australia and come over here and be our sound engineer. You can do all our bits and all all our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can. You know, I'm, I've only been doing this for like uh, when did I? I bought a, a MacBook, you know, the, a laptop about I don't know four five months ago. Mm-hmm. So this is all pretty new. So 
listen, it's, it's a lot of fun. You've obviously got a knack for it. It's not that I can't do it. I just don't have the time, and I find with the stuff that I have, like I don't have a Mac, I have a PC, and when I try to edit sound stuff, it's just a pain in the ass. He can't do it. Yeah, I can, no, totally I can't. Can't no. Do Well, it. listen, no, I edit. I listen. I helped edit the Mongo Like Candy. We won a national mm-hmm. award for that show, but I did it on somebody else's computer. Also, and, he can't do it. Oh yes, I. <laughs> no, up. he totally can't do it. <laughs> all right, no, that's fine. I don't get credit for crap. It's all right. No, no, it's fine. I I don't have the time. I can't do it. I, and then plus, like I said, see, like he said he can't do it. Did you hear? It? I don't have the time. Okay. I can't do it because I don't have the time. And so also, gotta, he just doesn't have the talent. I, I have the talent. I can do it. Or the I can ability. Do it. All right, both of y'all can kiss my ass, first of all. Right? You can kiss both my ass, both, both cheeks, one for each of you. Or the self-awareness. I hope your house eats both of you. Both of your houses. Your apartment's going to eat you and leave your roommate. And Jordan, your house is going to eat you and then spit you back up. It's going to be like, eh, that's no, too salty. We're not going to have it. That's not so bad. That would be the only time my apartment ever gets cleaned. You probably make a lot of money, too. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what I'm going to say, man. If anyone, if anyone annoys me from now on, it's just two words, sinkhole. Uh, no kidding, dude. Just put the yeah. Instead of the stink eye that you give him, you give him a sinkhole eye. You see this eye? Your sinkhole's coming, yeah. buddy. <laughs> it's very dangerous for us down here. You should pray for us because who knows? There's been like three sinkholes, and I don't know. I live in a you know we all live in the same state. It could anything can happen. It could open up and swallow us up in the middle of the night. Unbelievable. I was worried that my kid would poop on me, but no, nope. sinkhole in the middle what? of the night. What? No, You're yeah, right you never know what a listen. Kid four was and a half. Gonna poop on Did he you? sneak into your bed and poop on you? No, <laughs> that's he, so weird. He hasn't yet, but I'm afraid of his feces. Why I'm are you of afraid feces. of that? You're I, I, afraid of him sneaking into your bed in the middle of the night ever. and pooping upon you? I knew if I said something random, Brad, they would totally freak out. They would freak the <laughs> hell out. Gross. Wasn't that so weird? Easy. Like, who would be like, "I'm so scared that yeah, my kids." Sometimes, poop sometimes when I think that they're not listening, I'll say something just to see. No, no, you don't get to play. Why would it's just a random thing? You have a pathological fear of your son coming in and pooping. On your chest in the night. <laughs> That's the way you want to run it, dude. Yeah, it could therapy. happen. It could, yeah. Thank you, Brad. It could happen. Oh, it's well. not. Look, it's not like it's impossible. It's not like I said. Oh, I'm afraid of a grasshopper peeling my heel skin back. You know, it's not something completely impossible that could actually happen. He could wake up groggy one night, not know where he's at, come sit on the edge of the bed, he's thinking it's the toilet, the and then poop whole on me. Whole scenario. I'm just saying. This is really oh, weird. Or, or he could. Uh, Jump up and swing off the fan going round and round and round and just destroy the whole room. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, that's awful. Do you have it storyboarded out, Chris? <laughs> no, but Brad does. Oh. He's he's already incorporated some of the things in the bedroom. I hadn't even thought about the Is fan. Is there a dwarf in there? What would the dwarf be wearing? No, yeah. If there was a yeah, dwarf with a young child <laughs> spinning on a fan throwing Poopy. feces, what outfit is appropriate? Uh, conductor's outfit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you uh, broke, broke the, the bell. You broke the bell. No, you didn't, you bastard. No, 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 no. Stealth broke oh, it. Uh, awesome. All right, Brad. Well, listen, I want to thank you again for the for the uh, intro, uh, your intro. I'm going to play it every time. It's awesome, dude. It is. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. All right, man. Anything else before we let you go? Uh, no, no. I was going to wish my dad a happy birthday. I, I spent... Uh, I was serving someone before, and I'm thinking, oh, my dad, my dad, I've got to go. I'll see you later. And I jumped on the phone, and I rang him up for his his birthday, and I was a month early. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's a good thing, though. Oh, I know. So now if I forget, it doesn't matter. Yeah. No, if you forget now, you're like, listen, mm-hmm. took care of that a month ago. I don't know if you remember that. Called you up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you accepted it. He accepted yep. it, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. well, you're going. Yeah, I had to. How old, is, how old is your dad? He took the call. He took. <laughs> oh, I, you know the strange thing is, I thought he was fifty odd, and I was thinking he was re- he was going really well, and uh, he's retired early, and he's done all this stuff in such a short time, and I was ten years out. <laughs> <laughs> You are, you are messed up all over the place, man. Yeah, yeah. Someone, yeah, and I said it to someone. They go, you know, he sold his business and all that. And I said, yeah, yeah. And he's only he's like 54. It's unreal. And they looked at me very puzzled. And I said, how old was he when he had you? <laughs> I go, oh. Uh, I said, you do the math. So I don't know. He said, I have. And, and I don't think. Yeah, and I said, yeah, it was 50. It was 10 years out. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all of Brad. a sudden, from this young, athletic-looking father, I've just got this old dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brad. Well, listen, always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, we've been talking to Brad McLean, our Australian comedy correspondent online. Uh, again, always a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, be safe, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, brother? Bye, Brad. 
Thanks, thanks, guys. Hover in the air and stay away from the sinkholes. Right on, dude. No, mm. I'm strapping myself in. I got ropes and all kinds of stuff. I'm not going anywhere. Right on. Ladies and gentlemen, our double chief comedy correspondent from Australia. Here's Brad McLean. We'll play his intro as his outro. Uh, no, that's... Oh, okay. <laughs> Marty's on the phone now. So yes, Marty we're going to play his. No, we're not. Yes, we are. Yeah, he's Australia? Yeah, he's too long-winded. Wait, what are Australians doing? Is he a comedian? He's a famous Australian hero. Yeah, he's too long-winded. Well, that's what happens when you come from a penal colony. Brad McLean! <laughs> what do you think of being chief? You know, working your way up to chief. Wait, wait, wait. Why do I have to work my way up to <laughs> anything? I was the first one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the College Station Comedy Report with our comedy reporter, Marty Hoffman, live from Texas, where they have chickens and cows and Martys. So many Martys. Marty, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Big Chief, what's up, baby? <laughs> Marty Hoffman. Oh, man, don't get me started. I had a long day. I had to spend all day on road jury duty. Road? <laughs> oh, you got sequestered, dude. That sucks. Oh. <laughs> Tiffany man, didn't even hear that. Sucks. I did. Oh. I Tiffany's heard back it. in Twitter land. No, I heard what he said. <laughs> that was the Twitter feed going. Is it going good? Are you getting a little action over there? I guess. Okay, she Oh, know. Kaz the comic wants uh, Brad to make him an intro. Oh, okay. Well, there's the challenge out there. Brad, if you got a couple extra minutes for Kaz, Kaz would like to... Get a taste of the he, Dallas thing going on. He likes it better than Marty's. Okay, uh, Marty, what's up, baby? How you? How you doing? Uh, what? yeah, I, I have to just give up my big chief thing. Uh, Brad's making his own intros now. <laughs> he's he's doing all sorts of stuff, and then Chris, yes, is is putting his love life out on the line with a <laughs> juicy story about being hot for an engaged chick and I'm going to try to have her call in, I give up. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I can't, no, don't. I got nothing going on in my life. That, that Marty, come on. Don't I, don't give up. Step up. Hey. Come on. You have stuff. I know you got yeah. stuff yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah. So how's the whole pizza delivering thing and like the kid situation? Are you mocking me? Are you mocking me right <laughs> no, now? <laughs> you... <laughs> Yeah, I think she's mocking you, dude. I think she mocked you a little. She, t you're gonna give her a Tim Kid now, because that's about the tone I took when I said with with Tim <laughs> Kid when I was like, yeah. So you know, you've been on the road. How are things going? Where are you at in your life? Yeah, well, you, you know, sort of the same way. What? What did you say to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, no. These guys are really stepping it up. They really are, and, and I'm just like, he, oh, by the way, it's Kegel. Kegel. Is it Kegel? Now, see, I asked yeah. multiple times last night. Nobody know. decided to go online and check it because they have the – go do the uh, spoken word. you have the dictionary that does the uh, Absolutely word? Absolutely not. Come I on. I say Kegel. Try it. Just Google it, no. please. I'm not a oh. person. Damn it, just Google it. Do something with your life, please. Help me out on the I show, could, damn it. Yeah, God, you were driving my wife nuts. Like, is it Kegel or Kegel? And she's, my wife's like, Kegel. It's Kegel. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, I know what it is because I've used the Benoit ball. Now, does your wife have Benoit balls? No, no, she does not. Why? Well, you say that like it's a bad thing. You say it like like it, my wife. It, 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 it was kind of weird. Not. I, I can't believe you guys are doing it. That's that's really awesome. I Is it? Will, I will be listening. Well, I mean, well, you can watch as well, but I mean, you like the idea? Do you think it's dangerous? <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's, it's, it's definitely nothing I've ever heard anyone come up with before for a radio show. <laughs> well, but now, Marty. And the fact that you got... And the fact that you got Tiffany to do that, actually, you got her to get her. Was this like a Jordan mind trick or something? No. no. That like, I know. Did he, I, did he like put something in a drink or something and then serve it to your wife and <laughs> Tiffany? And then they came up with it on their own, quote unquote. You he know? did. Well, I mean, part of me, when they said it, I was like, what am I listening to? And why is my wife involved? And then. Like, part of me was you're like, like pitching yourself to see if you're going to wake up. Well, no, because like, part of me is wait. like, it's kind of titillating. And then the other part is like, ew, like, well, why would anybody want to do that? But then I'm like, I think I'd like to see that. I think I'd like to see who wins. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm like, going to. Like, I know you're already doing it. It's, it's Crystal's a, a pro. Yeah, well, then, you know what? Then, you know what, uh, Ralph Macchio? Practicing. We'll train you. That's right. You'll get yeah. some training, get some Kegel, Kegel <laughs> training. Oh, I'd rather try oh, beginner's luck. I want to see the montage. I want to <laughs> see the montage. <laughs> right? Of her slowly the getting better at holding balls in her vagina. Yeah, we'll that do. That would be awesome. We'll, yes. use the, we'll use the theme from, you're the best, the best. 
Oh, my God. If I, you can hold an egg in your vagina, you can hold a Benoit paw in your vagina. If you can catch a chicken with your vagina, you can what? catch this chicken. <laughs> Take this stone from my hand with your vagina. If you can do this, then you will win the Kegel Kegel Challenge. Just make my car shiny with that thing. You can do it. <laughs> I don't know how you feel. Like I, I on wags off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that was a joke. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, he went the route. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> even though Brad and Chris are stepping up, I don't know how you can say that. You know, what I mean, listen, you're married to a doctor for God's sakes. All mm-hmm. right, so I mean, there's got to be some interesting interaction happening back and forth that you could comment on. I mean, can you give Chris Kaz any? Uh, you heard actually what he was talking about. Can you give him any advice on on how to maybe? I mean, I don't know what to tell him. I think you gave the best advice you've ever given in your life. What? What you said, what you said, I'm not Jordan, not Jordan, Jordan, like, call in. Uh, but what you said about <laughs> just like, hey, it's a feeling that you have right away, you know, let it, you know, you'll meet others like this. Why go for the one that's already in a complex relationship? That's, yeah, well, I didn't say why not go. Really you, just, you just have to decide whether uh, it's going to pan out. I mean, I, I don't believe in my heart that that feeling that you get in the beginning of a relationship stays. And until, we're not like when I meet people that have been married for 15 years and like, yep, I love them just as much as the day I met them. I don't believe that. I just don't believe that life works that way. I don't believe relationships work that way. I believe as you become comfortable with somebody, the feelings change. They become different. You may still have a deep love you, for the person, but you, it's not you, the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I think uh, I, in my relationship, I mean, I love my wife every bit as much as I did when yeah. I first met her. Well, no, but do you get the do you get butterflies? I think she's incredibly sexy and exciting. And I'm not just saying this because I know she's listening inside the house while I'm outside the house. I'm not saying that. For that. <laughs> she's getting the kitchen utensils right now. Oh, he's uh, coming back in. I will bust that back. You get locked out. <laughs> He's like the tiger in the Flintstones right now. He's I trying know. to crawl, go back through the window. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying, dude? When you met your wife and, you, you know, when you met Sharice, your wife, and you guys dated a couple for the first couple of times, you do get nervous and you get kind of ner- butterflies and you're like, what's going to happen? You don't know what the person looks like naked, so you're trying to think of what that might be like. Or, you know, first kiss, you don't know how that's going to be. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be? And then it's very exciting. Now when you kiss your wife, it, it's a kiss, and you don't, you don't get the same excitement out of the kiss. I, I'm sure your wife would be, if she was honest, would tell us the same thing. It's not the same right. thing later on. Here it is now, like number of years down the road, and you've, you've had to see her poop on your son's head at some point, and it's all different now. <laughs> it's all changed. It's not the same. No more secrets. <gasps> you there? Yeah. It, 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 it's, a different, it's a different feeling. It is a, it is a different kind of right. situation because, you know, you're, you're familiar with the person. Right. There isn't that first discovering thing. That's the excitement so that of discovering thing is very exciting, and that's right. what people that's what breaks up marriages and everything is because it's like oh they're new and they're so exciting, and then you get to know the new and exciting person, and you're like oh well they weren't any better than what I had they right. were just new and exciting. But that's what yeah. people I think that's what people equate as love. I think that's their definition of love is that first you know year. It's the chemicals. R- well, chemicals or whatever you want to call, it, but just that feeling that I think that's what they think love is, and that doesn't mm-hmm. last for fifteen or twenty years. No. I don't think it lasts for a year and a half. I think it changes. Once you decide to be with somebody no. and you settle in, that's it. I that's mean, why, you know, that's why Brad McLean really has the right idea. He only dates little people in disguises. So it's always <laughs> it's different every day. There's always mystery there. It always changes. What do we have today? Oh, look at that. He's a little baker. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, oh, look, he's a bowl of petrol. Oh, look. Yeah. <laughs> now, Marty, uh, we were talking about animals. Uh, animals that you might be afraid of. Do you have a fear of a certain animal hurting you? A fear of an animal hurting me. Um, well, I've been stalked by a tiger once. What? That was pretty intense. Well, let me give you an example. Yeah. Tiffany, what are you afraid of? You said there's one thing you don't. You're kind of. I don't like roaches. Okay, and I'm with you on that. If a roach gets on me, I will hurt myself to get that thing off me. Like, I will jump over furniture and uh, bend my limbs the way they're not supposed to be bent if, to try to get it off. Yeah. Jordan, you have a very different fear. I don't understand your fear. Th- th- listen to Jordan's How can fear. you not understand this fear? Oh, tell everybody what you're afraid of. Cows. Yeah, really? Hold on. Marty, did you hear that? Cows? <laughs> yeah. Big, giant, stupid cows? If a cow got on me, I'd be dead. I wouldn't be hurting myself <laughs> trying to get it off. I'd be dead. Cows are awful. <laughs> His stupid roaches are nothing, man. 
Snakes try to get away from you. A cow can just stomp you to death without even thinking about you it. Mean and a I you mean, mean a bull? I mean a bull? Any cow. Any cow. And what's more, cows have good reason to come after you. <laughs> <laughs> any animal has a reason to come and murder you. It's a cow. Yeah, but how often does it actually happen? It's just not in their nature. Oh, they don't want you to know how often it happens. <laughs> Marty, what's yours? So, um, spiders are kind of creepy to me. What are spiders? Like spider, spider. Yeah, spider. Those are spiders. those are those are, oh. those are creepy. Any I don't see enough big animals. I mean, if there was like a really giant animal, like I said, I was over at a wildlife on Easy Street years ago, and there was a, a tiger, and it was behind like a fence but it had like a wide open kind of range to roam in. Mm -hmm. And I was apart from the uh, group and it started stalking me. And even though there was a cage between us, it was still pretty intense to be stalked. By yeah. A tiger. Because you look like a kid in the reflection of the glass, but in the tiger's eyes, you're like a mm -hmm. cartoon little drumstick walking with legs. That's what you are. Yeah. yeah. With a, with a giant drumstick sticking out of his neck. <laughs> <laughs> it's your Adam's apple. <laughs> I got the joke. Thanks for calling out. <laughs> Wax on, wax off. Got it. <laughs> okay, so tigers. I mean, that, look, listen, tigers is a kind of a, who isn't afraid of a tiger? I mean, who would go up and, except for the, you ever seen that video of that guy sitting there petting the tiger in India, and then it latches onto him, and his friends are just trying to pull him away from the tiger? Too funny, dude. I don't know. I want to fist fight a tiger. I'll tell you an animal that I'm really careful around? Yeah. Horses. Why? Horses, horses. are just like cows. Them. I don't trust horses. Okay, so that's, that's, right, that parallels Jordan's fear of cows. Yeah. I, I'm also yeah, afraid no, of horses. Yeah, no, no, no. A horse is fast and can kick. A cow is slow and eats grass. <laughs> horses eat grass. <laughs> so you could stand next yeah, to... Yeah, horses eat grass as well. But, the, you know, you don't have to worry about getting, like, kicked, you know, if you get behind a cow. I cows don't know. I like, get swatted with a tail. A tail, cows, that's about it. Cows can sprint. <sighs> no, not really. What about Bleakly. bucking? What about, yeah, what about bull riders? Those things move. Yeah, now a bull, a bull is a totally different a thing. Bull's a bull's not a cow. Yeah. Avoid. No, a bull's a cow. No, a cow's a girl and a bull's a boy. Bam! A girl's a heifer and a bull's a boy. She's They're right. both cows. He's right. Hmm. The cow's the species. I don't know. The yeah, I know. That's obvious. We're <laughs> just correcting you. Uh, I'm not. Sure, actually. Google it. That, Jordan. Oh, my God. This is just a way to get me out of the conversation again while I Google something. <laughs> like Kegel. You never pulled up the audio thing for Kegel. We still don't know how it's correctly pronounced. Kegel. Sharice. Sharice. Whatever. Sharice Kegel. is throwing her master's degree around like like we know. What, what degree does Sharice no, have? No, it's not a master's degree. It's a PhD. Exactly. Yeah, I knew that was coming. It's I psychology, was coming. not in Kegelism. Uh, well, but just pull up the uh, vocal. Kegel. Pull up the Kegel. vocal thing where it actually uh, says I'm it. I'm trying to find one, but I found it twice, and it says, how do you pronounce Kegel? And it says Kegel. That's because you keep typing in, how do you pronounce? Just no, put Kegel vocal. Kegel is pronounced Kegel. That's K. That's K E Y. That's K. Go. No. Oh, key. Excuse me. You're right. I'm sorry. I apologize. What do you, what do you have sorry. in your pocket? I don't. <laughs> do you have a, you have your K ring? Shut up. Did you lock your K's in your car? <laughs> 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 Kegel. Oh my God, Marty! I wish you were here, man. I'm doing the uh, Tampa Bay Comedy Festival here on Sunday night. I'm opening up for Ben Haig. I have no idea who this guy is. I'm sure he's very he funny. He was at Snappers. Was he? Did you see him? No. You, okay, I thought you had like inside information. No. Is he a local guy? Or I thought he was from no, Boston. He's he from travels, Boston. Yeah. Okay, all right. So he's from Boston. I'll be opening for him uh, a Sunday night at the uh, Coconuts uh, Room in St. Pete. Uh, for the Tampa Bay Comedy Festival, it's eight o'clock. Uh, it'll be I'll put it on my Facebook this page Sunday? and come out. Yeah, this Sunday the tenth. That's right. Maybe I'll go. And then next week after that, I'll be doing a room in Clearwater. And I'll let you guys know about that. You can come out. How? What, what's going on with your comedy? Have you given up yet? Um, no, no, no. Uh, I still uh, do it weekly. Um, well, that means once a week. Um, <laughs> Thanks. And I uh, and now I've got like a boost in my comedy career because uh, somebody that I opened for was just on the View. Oh yes! So I can I can now say you know has opened for Mike Rivera. Oh my god! So that's you know that's really good. <laughs> uh, I mean, as long as he you know sticks with it and everything, and just doesn't go back to teaching. You know, had, I don't had, know. Had you seen his set prior to us playing it, or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I was following it along Facebook with everybody else, yeah. but I actually watched the view, and then it was interrupted by the president. And right. Everything, so that was. Oh. You know, and I watched it when he won. Yeah, listen, I, I'm excited. I thought the set was really good. I thought I told Mike. I talked to Mike uh, last uh, earlier this week before he started flying all over the damn place. 
uh, that um, you know when it came time to to put up or shut up, he put up, man. He he, he dropped it up there. It was a great set. I looked at the other comics yeah. and they were they were nowhere near the caliber of Mike. Marty, are you ever disappointed? Well, I mean, there was there was one the uh, the black lady uh, was very funny, but yeah. kind of hacky. Yeah, I, I mean, just the, right. The, the black name has kind of been done to death. Right. And, uh, I mean, as whereas it's funny and it gets a lot of response, it's just tacky. No, you're right. I have seen the whole weird people do, you know, black people have weird names thing, but she can get away with it because she's black. I have a white guy. But I thought the other people were not like the, the male teacher. The other male teacher was just not anywhere yeah, near where, no. no. And then, and then I guess, uh, I guess Mike was nervous about this Nancy Richards or whoever she was, and I didn't think she was that the girl from uh, Staten Island with the really thick New York accent. I didn't think she was that funny either. So I thought Mike, they made it yeah, easy for Mike. I didn't think she was that funny either. I, I thought, I mean, she has the attitude and stuff, but that was, you know. Right. Hi. Yes. Yes. Call, well, hold on. We got another caller. Piggyback on. He wants to get right in. Caller, welcome to Double Special. Who are we talking to? Hi, this is uh, Tom Jackson. I'm calling from Westerly, Rhode Island. Hey, okay. Tom Jackson. Talking to the mic, Tiffany. Do you know Tom? Yeah, yeah. Tell me who he is. He is on Twitter. He's Thomas Jackson Jr. on Twitter, right? And, like, yeah, uh, yeah he's he's been supporting us from, like, the beginning pretty uh, much. Well, he's an awesome. This is his first time calling in, w- though. Welcome to the show, Tom. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Now, you're, in, awesome. you're in Westerly, Rhode Island? Yes, I am. Now, are you involved in comedy at all? Are you not a comedian, or are you just a regular person? <laughs> I'm a regular person, and I'm a very big fan of comedy. Oh, right on. Well, th- that's awesome, dude. Uh, have you ever have you ever thought about doing comedy, or you just like watching it? I I I I've, I've thought about doing comedy, and I and I do like uh, watching comedians as well, and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I I actually start. I got my startup right near where you're at. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Comedy Treehouse is the first place I ever played, and that's you know. Close to, not close to Westerly, but in the same general right. vicinity. Yeah. Oh yeah, Tom. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, Tom. I have no idea. I was hoping <laughs> Tiffany had like secret Twitter stuff. For oh, him. okay, perfect, Tiffany. Who are your favorite comedians then? Okay, my favorite comedian, Marty yeah. Hoffman. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my top three would be uh, Brad Garrett. Uh huh. Um, let's see, who was the other one? Uh, Brad Garrett from Everybody Loves Raymond. Yes. Yes. Yeah. As I a, as a saw him. Over at uh, the Foxwood Casino up here, and okay. he was hilarious. Okay. And uh, I like, um, let me think here. I like uh, Howie Mandel. You know, when he was doing it, and he would go out, and he does go out and does his thing. Mm-hmm. And um, another one I I like, comedian wise, that always makes me laugh is uh, I can hold on here. I had a list here. What does he look like? And we'll have Marty guess who he is. Tell us, tell us what he looks like. Oh, okay. Um, I actually hold on here. Just give us a body shape. Tell us what his body looks like. Body shape. Yeah. Um, Tall and lanky, short and squat. Short and squat. Pear shaped. Pear shaped. Big and fat. Craig Ferguson. Oh damn it! You could have said British. Ferguson's good. Yeah, you could have said British. I I just wanted to see what Marty was going to guess. He's Scottish. Yeah. Is he Scottish? No, he's Scottish. So, okay, all right. So, of the three, one's tall, one's bald, one's kind of effeminate. It's pretty much me. If you combine <laughs> all three together. So, really, I should be your favorite. <laughs> he's right. No, don't Tom, that was, that was Marty chiming in. What do you think? Marty yeah. Hoffman has a good point. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> um, I, actually, I actually just... Um, celebrated a year ago. I had a kidney transplant. Oh, jeez! And and I just completed like a full year of recovering. Well, there's it. there's nothing funny about that at all, Tom. No, no, you but know? it's good. No, it's, but it was good because yeah, it's a good. Well, the thing is that um, Dude, if we were up there, we'd take you out for drinks right now. <laughs> I I actually I actually uh, got through the whole thing by listening to podcasts and all that stuff, and I I actually would uh, make the nurses laugh. When I was in the hospital. See, he's got the gift. Yes. Yeah. Well, now you That's have to be. Thing. I've, I've have, I work in the medical field, and I know a couple of kidney transplant, transplant patients are that you have to be on the list waiting for quite a while, right? How long did you wait for your kidney? Five years. Five years. Holy crap, dude. Yeah. Marty, what's the long, longest you've ever had to wait for something? <laughs> uh, um. Well, let's see. I've waited to be famous now for almost. <laughs> 20-some years? You are not trying hard enough. <laughs> when will you give up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike Rivera is 50. I got 51. more years. 51. 
<laughs> now, one, oh, nine, nine years. Yeah, nine. Tom, uh, did you hear the Mike Rivera bit that we played? Yes, I did. What did you think of that comedy? Did you like that? I yes, I did. I thought that was very funny. Yeah, he's a he's a funny dude. Yeah. I think he's got promise. Oh, yeah. And I, I like I like the uh, the small independent comics as well, you know. And like if you if I can find anyone like uh, if I look up comics on YouTube, I'll like try to look up someone that's not very much well known, but it's starting to get up there and stuff like that. Yeah. Because it's it's, it's fun, you know. Because then once they become bigger, you go, well, I remember when that person was doing this and this. Yeah. Well, I'll never say it to Mike. Have you looked up Have you looked up uh, Marty Hoffman on YouTube yet? <laughs> not yet. But I will be doing that as soon as I get off the phone. Actually, it, you can save yourself time if you're at this next time you're at your store. Just read the back of a Totino's pizza box. And- <laughs> uh, Tom, that's one of he does a bit about the Totino's pizza box, and so Jordan was <laughs> razzing him a little bit. It's a very funny bit. You can't, you can't, you can't find it on YouTube though. No. Well, listen, Tom, he is on YouTube. Uh, check him out. It's the uh, what is it? That's the uh, Ohio Funny Bone that you were at, right? Uh, yes, I was at the Funny Bone in Columbus, Ohio. Yep. And if you just look up Marty Hoffman uh, on YouTube, it'll be the first thing that comes up. Yeah, it's a very funny <laughs> set, actually, Tom. That's what I'll do. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, I Tom. Actually, so, yeah, so call back next week and give us give us your review of it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, that'd will, be a good I idea. I will do that. All right. <laughs> you were saying, Tom? Sorry about that. We cut you off. I'm at, I actually am, um, through Twitter, I've actually met a few comedians, and uh, I interacted with a lot of them through Twitter. Actually... One of them, very famously, and I don't mean the name drop, but like Kevin Pollack follows me. On Do Twitter. it. Listen, I'm a huge Kevin Pollack fan. A lot, a lot of people know if you know if you're younger. Uh, Kevin Pollack was in Grumpy Old Men. He was in. Uh, oh, yeah. He was in uh, Once Upon a Time in America. He's a great actor. But before he was a, an actor, he's got he was a great a... show now. He does a um, an online show. Uh, what he's got his own online like a podcast. Yeah, it, it's like a, uh, he does. He actually does a podcast, but he does an online. Like a web, web series? Show. He does a chat show. Oh, oh it's a chat show. It. Yeah, but he also does a, uh, a podcast called The Talk and Walkin, where he does the entire thing talking to a guest, and he does it as Christopher Walken. I, I knew you were going to say that, dude. <laughs> I You know, I was going to, you know, and he does a much better Peter Falk, by the way, but I... <laughs> I I thought I thought I was I was gonna make a joke and then now I mean, there it is it's real holy crap yeah uh, it is the real thing oh my god I you know I I love doing Christopher Walken's voice but I don't I couldn't now Let's are you being it. serious about that is he does he really do that yeah he knew, really and it's called the talking walking well no it makes done. perfect sense I guess wow <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. oh, wow and, <laughs> no but I mean I love to I crack the girl up work I do a pretty good right, Christopher Walken my okay if I did Christopher Walken be like. Listen, Tom, the problem that you're having, and you don't know this, you couldn't know this, you never could know this, is that your love of comedy, it means nothing, nothing at all. Really, what you need to do, and listen to me, I'm not, I don't say this to most everybody, but... Also, Chris can't do Christopher Walken impersonation. Uh, George, uh, I think this is pretty good. I'm impressed. Thank you, Tiffany. Yeah, Jordan yeah, will never yeah, give George me credit for anything. Did you edit that phone. yourself? No, that, I, that sound good. Yeah, you're damn right. It sounds good. Jordan, kiss my ass. <laughs> the problem that Jordan <laughs> has. Than Jordan's Christopher Walken. Yeah, Jordan. yeah, yeah. You do yeah, your Christopher Jordan, Walken. Do yours. I don't pretend to do a Christopher Just Walken. Just try. I didn't try. pretend either. I only, I only I do Phil it. Hartman. Shut no, up. Try. Yeah, well, he's freezing up. Hold on, Mr. Theater Guy from NYU is freezing up. Do it. Jordan's problem is that. He's got, he's got nobody. <laughs> he's got no friends. Nobody to love him. Hey, you. That bothers him deeply. <laughs> Look, he's trying. And I have to say that eventually we'll kick him off the show. We don't need him. I'll pick somebody else up. Tom, come to the studio and be with us. I love you, okay? Oh, my God. You have, you're like a mix That's between beautiful. a yeah, you gas lose station it guy and oh, Fred Drescher. Shut up. You were going in and out. Oh, yeah. shut up. But it was pretty good. I liked right. it. Tom, it made me laugh. Tom, like- everybody shut up. Tom, how was that? Was that acceptable? That was a very good impression. That's yeah. all I get. That's very all I good. care. I do three impressions. That one's pretty good. It's enough to make people laugh. I don't care what y'all say. I laugh. All right, Tom. Listen, I I love the fact that you're a fan of the show. Keep listening. Let your friends know, man. We'll do. Otherwise, we come and we get you. Who was that? <laughs> yeah, who was that? That was Russian. Shut up. Was that Christopher Walken again? <laughs> yes, it was. Oh. Chris- was it Christopher Walken yeah, doing a Russian? Tom. Tom is awesome though because he always likes our stuff, yes. like on things, and like he also always retweets our stuff and he promotes us. You're awesome. I think you're great. I'm so glad we finally get to talk to you. Yeah, but yeah. He, did he try to defend Definitely. me when I was getting shocked? No, I didn't see Tom then. Where was Tom trying to save me? He was very entertained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> no one cares about you, Chris. <laughs> I know, obviously not. He was, uh, <laughs> he was a little turned on like the rest of us. Yeah. What is that, an impression? We hate your impression, Chris. All right, Tom, listen, <laughs> always a pleasure. Call anytime, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, there, you roll him. Have a great night. All right, you bye. too. Bye. All right, roll him out of there, Tiffany. He's your friend. By Thomas Jackson Jr. So he's at Thomas Jackson Jr. on Twitter. So follow him. Yeah. He's so, from Westerly, Rhode Island, which is 12 minutes away from Easterly, Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marty, that listen, that, that walking wasn't that bad, was it? No, your walking is fine. Your walking is fine. Have you done it on stage? No, because everybody does it on stage, dude. I mean, you know, listen, Jay Moore. I know, but it's gold. It's gold. Yeah, but it just fits in there someplace, like really quickly improvised in there. Yeah, but I Jay, if Jay I Moore has the judge improvised in there. It, it, yeah, it, Jay Moore is pretty much wow. corner of the market on the the walking thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe who well, knows? No, no, Christopher Walken cornered the market on the walking thing. Listen, are you saying that I'm you don't sure, like I'm impressions? I'm pretty sure the person who gets paid the most for doing Christopher Walken is Christopher Walken. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure he doesn't. Yeah, I'm sure nobody like impressions. does impressions of anybody. No, Jordan hates impressions because he. Like them. No, because he sees it as like Jordan sees it as like a remix of a song that he liked. You know what I'm saying? Like it, when the song came out and nobody liked it, then that's fine. But as soon as somebody starts to like it and then they remix it, he doesn't want to hear the remix because it's just the same regurgitated song. That's where he's coming from. I watched a rich little special on HBO once too many times when I was a kid. Apparently. I can't handle it. Jesus. Well, he never did walking, I'll tell you that. I, 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 I got to say, I love uh, Christopher Walken when he's on Saturday Night Live. Oh, he's he amazing, is, dude. Um, he's always awesome on that. Yeah, hold on. His uh, thing with the plants, the googly eyes. Oh, so that and the uh, fine champagne sketch with the glove is pretty funny. And then obviously the his cameo oh, in, the, no. in the Kansas video where he's like, more cowbell. That was the best ever. More cowbell. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I like him best like when he's cowbell. not whoring himself out as a Christopher Walken stereotype and instead decides to act once in a while. <laughs> Are you upset with Christopher Walken? What is your problem? Not at all. Jesus, dude. Man, I, how do you not like Christopher Walken? Yeah, he's like just, him. I think he's... Is it just because you can't do a Christopher Walken impersonation? Uh, yep. That's the, what it all stems from, Yeah, yes. he does a bang-up Ralph Macchio, though. <laughs> do I? <laughs> He I goes, never do even I? Knew. No, because it would be pointless. He's got no accent at all. Well, it's sort of a New York Brooklyn thing, but Joni. <laughs> oh my God! All right, all right, buddy. Well, listen. I, you know, you got to have. What, did you hear about the sinkhole? Did you hear us talking about the sinkhole? How about that, dude? Yeah, yeah. I heard the whole show. Oh my, the sinkhole just ate the dude. Dude, you're you know the, the neighborhood you used to live in gone. The whole thing's gone. The neighborhood's gone. <laughs> whole neighborhood, dude. <laughs> No, no, it's obviously not. Yeah, but, no. So it just, it, it, it ate like his house or his no, bedroom or what? No, it, a sinkhole opened up underneath his bedroom and swallowed him. I mean, uh, he fell like 50, 60, 100. They're saying anywhere from 50 to 100 feet. He's gone. 50 to 100? That's a huge sinkhole. I know. Well, there, listen. Where was this? What area was this in? Brandon. Sefner. Sefner. Brandon. Yep. Sefner, Florida. Oh, my I know. goodness. It, well, there, you've got to move. <laughs> I'm not moving. I live in Clearwater. I'm not. I live nowhere near Seven. You got to move to Brandon. No, I'm gonna stay right where I'm at. We're we're highest point. I got there's no sinkholes around us. Thank God. I'm not. Oh wow, there Chris, is no sinkholes. Chris Temps fade. <laughs> 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 Tune in next week when me and Tiffany Barbie will be mourning Christopher Gorgeous. Listen, let uh, also Ben Wabals. Let fade come. <laughs> Now that was see that now that was bad. All right, good. Yeah. All right, so oh, was that Christopher Walken? No, shut up. Now that was uh, Ed Beasley. That's who. It was. <laughs> All right, Marty. Anything that you want to share with us people? Because we got to get out of here. Right? We got four minutes. I'm ready to get the hell out of here. I got the I got you know stuff to do. Yeah. Like what? I don't know. I'll figure out something. Hmm. We didn't talk about uh, a lot of your words. No, we oh. missed a lot of stuff. Yeah, all the news that I have is bad. So why? No, what do you mean yeah. bad? What does that mean? Like depressing bad, like you don't want to hear it. Bad. No, now I do. Now, I, listen, I you're a friend. I don't care what you want. Can what you do you tell me? Down into like a minute. Yeah. Yeah, we got a minute. Tell us real Ready? quick. Give real us, quick. Go. No, and then we'll think about how to help you, and All then right. next week we'll talk All about. Right. It. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. We'll finish the show on this note. Oh, crap. My grandmother died last night. Oh, that sucks. How old was I she? I told you you didn't want to hear it. How old was she? She yeah. was ninety-eight. Well, what the well, hell did you really expect old. to happen, dude? Well, no, no, I'm. <laughs> That's what old it's people sad do. When it happens, it's not like I was shocked that it happened. No. Like I was, you know, thinking, well, it's there's not be sad. It's She's not... 98, but, dude. Like, how long do you think she was going to live? Yeah, for? how fun was she being we 98? We were kind of hoping she'd get to 100. We really were. Because she was the one who <laughs> oh, always looked like, so like, you'll see it on my selfish. Facebook page. You'll see a picture of my father, myself, my son, and my uh, grandmother. 
And she has looked like she looks sitting on that couch like she has for the past she's 40 still, years. She's still sitting right? on the couch. And so, we expected her to be the one that, after her husband went, we expected her to be the one that went first. No, but Tiffany and brought up a good she point. she has outlived everyone. She, we, we think of her as like Yoda. She's, you know, just, she's short, she was little, and, you know, she, we expected her to just, you know, be the first, and she has outlived every other grandparent I've ever had. So, well, yeah, but, but Tiffany brought up a good point. How much fun is she at 98? I mean, come on. At some point, yeah. you're like, okay, this is getting boring. And what are you going to do, lady? You get to call her Yoda. She's got to be good for something. What did she die from? <laughs> yeah, what was it? Just old age? Lightsaber? Uh, she had had a stroke, and then she just slowly deteriorated. Uh, uh, well, nothing, listen. Nothing, you know, it wasn't like, oh, you know, an explosion or anything. She, she didn't die in a sinkhole or anything like that. Uh, listen, <sighs> all kidding aside, Big Chief, we we, uh, we feel bad for you, and our condolences go out to your family and the loss mm-hmm. of your grandmother. And uh, People keep dying for them. Well, yeah, everybody, nobody gets out alive. Nobody gets out alive. Listen, Marty. I hate to I hate to leave you on a note, but we got to get out of here. So uh, <laughs> all the I mean, why not? What the hell? I'll leave on this one. Uh, give us a call and say hello sometime. All right. Who, Marty? Uh, I, yeah. will I meant me personally, Tiffany. Oh, all right? can't you talk about that later? No, uh. I'm I'm wrapping up now. Jesus, man, you're making it take longer. All right, Marty. Sometime in the summer, I might come. Like in July, I might come and stay in your house again. All right, perfect. By yourself, or you bring the whole family? Uh. For a little while, I'll have my uh, wife and son, and then I'll just have my son. Sweet. Oh, Charisse will be cool, because I've decided that I'm going to get a degree in psychology as well. Oh, we'll talk about that next week. All right, Marty. We're going to get out of here. Perfect, (laughs) yeah. Right. No, that'll be I'll have my wife call in next week. (laughs) With some problems. Have your wife call in and quiz her. All right, listen, we're going to let you go, buddy, all right? All righty. Take care, guys. All right, there you go. Roll them out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Big Chief Marty Hoffman. We're over time already. So tune in next week when we discuss exactly how dangerous it is for a Benoit ball to get stuck inside your vagina. <laughs> I'm worried. It's not dangerous at all. I know. I didn't My think so. My mom is worried. You can just poop it out. We've had a great time. This has been Double Special. We'll see you next week right here on the station, ComedySlamRadio.com. And you can check us out on Twitter uh, and Facebook. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Tiffany Barbie, say goodbye. See Jordan you Lee. Goodbye. We're out of here. Good night, everybody. It was seriously, you just relax. What was that? I'll tell you what that was. That was another fine show from ComedySlamRadio.com, where we put the dot com in comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Double Special Show starring Christopher Gorgeous and J.B. Lee. Presented by ComedySlamRadio.com. Tune in next week live from 8.30 to 10.30. Please.